Alrighty, Kappa. That was quick. Whiz bang Kappa's delivery same day dispatch to 3 p.m. Oh, with over half a million customers, it doesn't take a genius to make a switch. This autumn, Milwaukee Tool has you covered with a comprehensive lineup of pro grade chainsaws and hatchets designed to tackle any cutting task with ease. No pull starts, no petrol fumes, no downtime for ongoing engine maintenance. Find your closest authorised trade partner today at milwaukeetool.com.au and experience the power and performance for yourself. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Beard and Blade, Australia's largest online men's grooming company. With over 1 million website visits, 500,000 satisfied customers, and their extensive range of products. From razors, beard oils, shaving creams, to skincare and hairstyling products. Making them your one-stop shop for all your manly grooming needs. Simply visit beardandblade.com.au and make the switch today to Beard and Blade. Another massive guest today and plenty more to come. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Righto, let's get straight into the show. That's <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, debacle. It's funny, it's mate. Yeah, I don't it's know. tough to get you boys back in town. Cocky, welcome back. Thank you. Happy to be back. Back in the in the mixer in Melbourne. It's uh, always around NBA finals. Yeah, conveniently. Yeah. It's tough though, because when I go overseas, it's like the actual finals. Like the playoffs are coming, which is good. I I get a grasp of that a little bit. And then when the business end comes, I'm uh, watching it at 4 a.m. In, in France. So and it's not in, ideal. What's in France at the big tournament coming up? French Open. French yeah, Open. French Open coming up. I've got a couple of masters starting in Madrid, then Rome, and then then French Open. You've been, you've been in great form, mate. Congratulations. Good to see you fit, healthy, consistent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been a good start to the year. Obviously, a good Aussie summer. A um, couple of hectic matches down under there. But uh, yeah, happy to keep it going. The, the goal for this year is to try and maintain it for the rest of the year. Play as many tournaments as I can. Makes it tough when I come back home, though. I don't want to leave too much. Yeah, that's nah, it. good to have you home. It's hard to know when you when you are. Like, when you're here, it's what? How, how long would you get? Like, two weeks in between? Yeah, probably had two, two and a bit. Yeah. yeah. Geez, your much. frequent flyers would be through the roof. Yeah, but it's not what it used to be. I swear I save up all these points and it only gets me like a premium economy to yeah. in Thailand or something. Yeah, yeah. So it's not worth it anymore. I just give up and pay full price. Lonely loves Thailand. You, that's more. You should- <laughs> <laughs> oh look, I'm not sure about Thailand, but the freaking fly points—I certainly haven't seen them. But he's missed those seen a hell of a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fly, he's missed those left, right, and the centre, oh, mate. That's like, this it's guy for 25 years. Can't get a fly to buddy anywhere. Unbelievable. So I was complaining about a fly. He lady paid for his first coffee for me today. So. <laughs> there is a lot of mail from you boys. Up to the, the eighty thousand dollar plumbing bill. Oh, have you said that? <laughs> that, that, is, yeah, that, is, that is that is on, on the record. record. Is that on the last one? Yeah, yeah but I should explain is. the reason behind oh, it. Dave, so. well, that's the question off the top. What is, is with you owing Lonnie's parents sixty k? <laughs> is that true or false? <laughs> Look, I thought. <laughs> I thought is it sixty or eighty. You bumped it up. Like little usually, little. Up. usually if times are tough and and your mate. Like asks, you know, I, I was from Adelaide at this point, so I thought Loney, out of the goodness of his heart, <laughs> would uh, <laughs> would offer his his room to a struggling tennis player trying to find his feet again, um, with no shoulder, trying to come back from the depths. Because after all, I've paid and helped Loney out, but <laughs> <laughs> doesn't doesn't matter anymore. Unbelievable! And just at the end of the day, I get I get a, a kicked out by his mum while playing UFC <laughs> on his couch. Yeah, that was a separate occasion. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just all part of just not loving from the Loney house. Oh, oh wow! And then the and then the invoice for sixty yeah, k. Apparently, the pipes underneath <laughs> the been <band> restructured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the ex guy came in there and dug up the driveway and stuff. But uh, look, Loney's <laughs> trying to Loney's trying to play me for a, an old house. Uh, and poor plumbing back in the day yeah. and he's just trying to throw it on the Kokonaka's it's house probably BT he's- BT used to be a plumber he's probably going around yeah, yours probably and was, your yeah. area you're in a nice rich yeah, Brighton and yeah, he's yeah, complaining yeah. about a bill yeah. unbelievable there's That's also so rumours so you're you're turning 43 next week and you're still, <laughs> <laughs> you're still living at your parents you house <laughs> still living at the parents house at 43 unbelievable <laughs> oh mate that's so fun <laughs> you should see his room as well it looks even younger he's got Pokemon all around the place <laughs> actually it looks like a chemist as well he's got every vitamin C under the it's sun it's true I do have a lot of vitamins is that the trick to being because he's, he's in, as I said he's always in great shape for a comedian and just a normal human it's funny you say that because he actually wanted to to go to the tennis and get a quick pump before coming into this van <laughs> I believe 
that was his and idea. And on top of that, he's actually put the tightest shirt he owns. <laughs> yes. I mean, and make sure he sat at the front. The shirt the- was strategic, but you were very quick to jump in the bit, mate. You wanted to get in that that slot. <laughs> you, you know that the camera is is better. <laughs> I'm on just that thankful side. for Loney that the camera doesn't show show down to his pins because that <laughs> would be tough. Doesn't do leg weights. Yeah, it's a bit well, of American dad about yeah, it. Well, that's well, cool. Maybe that's why he can't get past American, <laughs> American <laughs> dad. Maybe that's why he can't. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, okay, that. Just as well, Tommy's giving you some sponsorships because you won't have any left. <laughs> 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 Jesus. And uh, Loney apparently at dinner. Um, Maybe You've been going out a bit, but uh, when the bill presents, your asshole turns into Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Is there any truth to that on, one? Okay. Oh. Nemo asshole. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Here we go. Here we go. May I bring up what happened the other night at dinner? I would like to go into this right oh, now. You can go into it, but I know you're going to milk it. So go ahead. <laughs> Not going to milk it. This is how Thadassi Kokonakis rolls. <laughs> Every single time the bill comes, he'll be like, we had a massive dinner. There was like, how many of us? There are five couples there. Yep. So 10 of us at dinner. We're sitting down. We're having a good night. And then the, anyway, the bill comes and Thadassi yeah, goes, mayo. oh, bro, do you want to just split this five ways? And I'm like, mate, I've had a vodka soda and a piece of bruschetta. <laughs> and he's like- We'll just split it five ways, mate. It's easier. Just do what I say. Do what I say. Do what I say. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. All right. No worries, mate. Anyway, end up being $255. I literally had a piece of garlic That's bread and a, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a water. He's had about 45 espresso martinis, <laughs> eating like a king, had a nice beef ragu, a seared steak from a Michelin star chef. And I'm literally there going, mate, I've literally paid $250 for a vodka soda and a piece of fucking bruschetta. <laughs> It was unbelievable. Loney will be, there'll be like a, a plate of chips come out and Loney will be like, no, nah, but I only had five of those. You oh, had like, that is absolutely you had, you had, you had eight no chips, so you got to pay more. Absolute cap. Go for Mr. Thanasi Kukadaz. Oh, bro, I actually made like $700,000 in two weeks, mate, over in Madrid, but I can't buy you a coffee, mate, because that's against uh, my policy as a bloke. Loney's the type of guy that like- When you're at a cafe and, and you've, you're both finished, he'll like hang back behind- uh, the counter and wait for me to go first. The oh. odd chance, the odd chance that I'm just like, yeah, don't worry about it, loads. I'll get this on. <laughs> Biggest fabrication <laughs> ever. Oh, fabrication. Somewhere up there in the clouds, there's a big man with a big beard, and he's keeping a tally of all the coffees I've bought. <laughs> this man. <laughs> Don't and one day that. when we go to heaven, mate, he's going to come out. We'll probably be in hell, but anyway, we go to heaven. He'll come <laughs> out. <laughs> we go straight to hell. Anyway, someone's keeping a tab and he's going to say, Thadassi, you owe this man X amount. You're going to have to pay up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't just stop there. Anyone knows. <laughs> Anyone. Ask all the boys. It yeah. doesn't just stop there, though. Cock, the lads reckon you've got COVID again because you've been isolating at your missus' apartment for the last 14 <laughs> days and have been nowhere to be seen. Is there any truth to That's that one? That's funny because uh, Lodi's been doing that for the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get him out. Every <laughs> day. I spend one bad. week. I try not to go out. I'm trying to change myself and not go out every weekend and not drink. I'm trying to trying to live a healthier lifestyle. The one time I do it, all of a sudden, loans turns into paparazzi. There's <laughs> cameras coming out left and right anytime there's something. Yeah, I can defend myself in this ridiculous claim that Thadassi is making. <laughs> There's been multiple times throughout my dating history that Thadassi gets the camera out, loves to fill me with chicks, loves to always take the piss out of me. The on one time I finally found this man in a relationship, I think this is my chance. I can finally get him back. We about my phone. I'm taking photos of this man just to get him back. You know, because the man's just given me a hard time for many, many years. Speaking of photos, there's rumours as well at F1 that Thanasi's nickname is uh, Early Days. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Is it's the only man that can get away with it. saying Early Days. No, so funny. I'm <laughs> seeing a news report on Channel 7. They're like, local tennis star Thanasi Kokonakis denied photos with his current new boudoir <laughs> <laughs> due to the fact that it was actually Early Days. <laughs> This is after flying her to Miami and being seeing her for about six to seven months exclusively. (laughs) Still early days. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. This I'll try is, and keep it low key, but backfired on me. That's yeah, all you boys are so funny. I, I've, I've yeah. fired some texts today. I go, boys, need some banner on one another, and it's just been hot from both of you. Oh, I thought this is just getting brilliant. started. And actually, I need some caffeine to fire my brain, man. I've actually left my coffee. Oh, in did the, you? In the car. Go grab that. Is that? Will that? Yeah, yeah. Keep the camera. One? Yeah, keep, keep the it rolling. Keep oh, it rolling. Seconds, I'll be right back. Keep it rolling. I'll be right back. He's left his coffee. <laughs> Ladies oh. and gentlemen, welcome to Hulk of Media. Ladies, welcome to Hulk of Media. What is this? Ladies, do you want to see a flaccid, mediocre-sized Johnson? 
straight from downtown. <laughs> have a go. Why do you have a ride in your car, bro? <laughs> He's got the beard and blind <laughs> robe on. Have a go at that. That's what it is. Yeah, it is. It is. He's taking it from the, the hot springs. You go to hot springs with your miss up. Not <laughs> yet, but she's on me. <laughs> she, she's on I me. swear every chick wants to go to the hot springs. All <laughs> of Melbourne's going to be in the water fucking jacuzzi. Mate, we should go on a double date to the hot springs. Nah. Okay. See. <laughs> <laughs> Split the bill. Oh, yeah, he could, he could take it. Yeah, Stang as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, mate. I've just, oh, oh, yeah, I've just forgotten my card again. Oh, cobwebs wallet. Yeah, 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 exactly. no worries. That is elite. Now, our friends at Beard and Blade have got us a couple of these. I thought, I think if there's one man that's going to throw it straight on, it's the greatest comedian we've ever seen, voiceover oh, thank artist you, thank you, and actor. Elliot Loney. <laughs> Much appreciated. Why are you laughing, you <laughs> dog rat snitch? What is this? <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm. Now, we know we do it at the, at the end, but we do it from the top today. Now, boys, I just wanted to get you a present here. Our friends from Beard and Blade. Mate, that's uh, the number one male grooming company in Australia. You're coming home with some beautiful prizes, but I hear a whisper, you may have already bought one today, but <laughs> it didn't do the job. So <laughs> you have to send that one back because we've got the best trimmer. Bought, in the world. I bought one yesterday, a gold plated 18 carat. I'm not sure what I was paying for, but it wasn't fucking cheap. It was like 350 bucks a while. I charge, charge it overnight. Nothing. Donuts. The blade's broken without me oh, even using wow. it. I take it back today. I get a refund. Oh no, I get another one actually, but I didn't know I was getting a hero blade from uh, Beard and Blade. Beard and Blade. Yeah, so that's much great. appreciated. And real handy around the, the tennis balls. I use this, oh, for, mate, yeah, I'll, I'll use this so around downstairs, the edges. I reckon. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's what it's all about. But also, I only can't grow hair yet, so he doesn't need <laughs> that's that. true. I actually can't grow a beard. There you go. Well, there's some styling powder as Fantastic. well from Beard and Blade. They've got it all. So if anyone out there Is this hasn't been on, yeah, that's for your hair. Okay, don't don't worry about it, Lonnie. You don't need <laughs> yeah, no worries, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully this beard trimmer will come in handy cutting this man down to size. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe shave some mayo off some of the stories he also <laughs> likes to tell. Beautiful hero, <laughs> hero. Look at that hero, which coincidentally he is not. But uh, it's still it's still a great brand. Heavy duty beard trimmer. And you get some uh, clay pomade there to slick the hair back. Cocky, you've just shaved. The head. Yeah, I had a shave. I had some blonde porcupine tips. I looked like Brett Lee back in the day. So, <laughs> <laughs> finger, finger off the long run. Yeah. I, thought, I thought I had to get rid of those and went for the uh, the shave. Oh, mate, it's a beautiful mate. Smell that. Yeah, it's elite. Oh, it's like cocoa butter. Yeah, how good is that? I, put, I smashed it today. Just yeah, man. Bit. You always look like an Abercrombie and slick. Yeah, is, that a, is that a King's Domain job or nah? Just nah, just the local um cash only boys in Essendon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they only take the cash. And so dodge. Just get the fade. Give them the forty five yeah. and see you later. That's now, mate, have you had a bit of David David Bowie? I smacked onto your forey or whatever. What, what's David Bowie? A bit of Botox? <laughs> no way. Mate, you just look unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> give me can, we, can we just take a moment to appreciate the great man Tommy Sheridan's <laughs> pill? If we did, I did put a bit of forehead. I put a bit of moisturizer on because I had a little bit of um bit of what a little zit there that I just sort of cover up. Yeah, but mate, look Is it like shining it. off the lights? Is well, it? I know mate, in this the day head is, the head is glowing. Yeah, yeah. In this day of cosmetic <laughs> uh how do we explain yeah, it? I know like, what you're talking about. No, yeah. it wouldn't do it. Wouldn't go down that route. Wouldn't go down that route. Nah, nah. No, mm. I don't think so. Okay. Have you gone down that route? <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, mate, definitely not. Tell me, <laughs> tell me how much you're sweating on the <laughs> so he, t- he, that off. he told me you put the robe on, the beard and blade robe, brother. They're, they're the best in, in the business. Yeah, I thought you are going to get the rig out. He's got the T-shirt yeah, underneath. I was you kept everything he on. didn't want to get the rig out. Well, I do have an uh, unfortunate confession, Tommy Sheridan, and that Arcee, I've told that Arcee off mic, but unfortunately I have uh, let the rig slip slightly since having a miss-o. Complacent. Really mm. good complacent. Yeah. <laughs> More speaking about the guy that gets 50 Luca Martes every <laughs> night before bed. <laughs> this guy's sending me a Snapchat every night of about 300 donuts. He's like, just ate this, feel sick. <laughs> I'm like, great. Speaking of, Aren't you an anyone, athlete? I'm going to plug him. Has anyone had those Luca Martes mm. on, on Chapel haven't. Street? Mm. Just next to 7 Eleven? Amazing. Unreal. Oh, silly. I can't silly afford stuff. to, man. No, Sloppy rig just mm. blows out straight away. Yeah, but. Doesn't matter. Yeah, but you're training. I've got to like, I've got to really, you got to By the time it. anyone sees under, you're in a good spot. No, not if you go on a Gold Coast for a no, sweat. No. Go down to Talabadra. <laughs> last year I was there. I'm not, our mate Rory Atkins. Oh. I was skinny last year and um, I was just running. I was yeah. just even wasn't doing gym. Like I looked like an avatar or something. Like I was just <laughs> horrific. <laughs> I went to the beach, got long arms and legs and I got this just you know, barrel chest mm. with just a, just a shock and rig. <laughs> and I went to the beach. I'm thinking, you know, you go out there for a bit of R&R. You're thinking, how good's this? I took my shirt off and he goes, fucking, what's wrong with your rig? I was like, what do you mean, man? He's sitting there taking photos and shit. And he put it on Instagram. I'm like, man, that looks horrific. And I was like, wow, that's enough. And then that yeah. was the moment. Yeah. You see it and you go, nah, 
that's that's putrid. So yeah. Yeah. Is you on the trend now? Is on that, the trend, yeah. yeah up nice. to I think I was like seventy four kegs, man. So I'm up to about wow. eighty two now. Oh, yeah, you on the creatine? Nah, I'm on Proe. Just a few Proe okay, shakes. Pro-y, right? Rockaby, big shout out to Rockaby. Oh, I love Rockaby. them. What's yep. Rockaby? It's a, it's a, it's Why'd a. Why did you say yep? Um, if you knew what he was trying to plug his sponsor. <laughs> sponsored. No, that's, oh, not, really? that's not a, that's not a sponsored okay. product. Yep, that is. Yep. <laughs> Rockaby, bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> they are elite. Go down yeah. to the uh, local Woolies or whatever. Get one of them, mate. The best proteins in town, I'm telling you. Fantastic. Just I'm buy them off the shelves. Uh, and, you know, while you get your rigged. So you got complacent, have you? A little bit complacent. Just like, I reckon the body fat percentage is just slightly dipped a few percent. Is that why you got the t shirt underneath? Yeah, like, you couldn't the t- get the chest yeah, out yeah. in the beard and blade robe. Yeah, it was a bit premeditated for Darcy. I think we can reveal that now that it is, I was going to get my shirt off. Yeah, I was wondering why you kept that. But, uh, well, I thought he was going to do a pre-show. I'm looking at him and he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, like hurry up and get the fuck out of me and get the robe on. He's like, nah, I'm like, mate, oh, my rig's so bad at the moment that I don't want people to listen to my rig. That's how bad it is. That's how bad. That's so why it's- I was open box 2022. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely not. In the Netflix special, I think I told you about the last yes, podcast. I'll actually watch that, by the way. Yeah, awesome. the one Thanasi's awesome. in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I was in good shape in it, but let's get back to Thanasi. Loney's making sure every every two seconds he just snaps himself in the background with <laughs> yeah, his yeah, headphones yeah. on. <laughs> well, it's real funny because you get like Kiggs, then you, you're walking in. And what a great time for that doco for you yeah. boys, winning that doubles championship or whatever. And, um, and you just got Loney in the background, mate. He makes me laugh so much. Like, <laughs> you did not have to say anything. Yeah, but he's so, you, you're so, yeah, the pill. It's so serious. Like, I'm only used to laughing and seeing him smile. Real serious. And he's like the bodyguard at yeah, the back. Yeah, I know. He would have had about four or five little mentions there. Oh, yeah. It was, it was pretty funny. My head popped up a few times, but there was just no mention about why I was there or what I'd do, which was the <laughs> best conveniently part. Conveniently popped up. You guys see the camera. He's always just like <laughs> lurking in the background every yeah, time. Wow. Free, little free feed. Yeah, 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 I'll just hide one steak under the other. So I don't think I've got two proteins. <laughs> Does this get to your big time, this stuff? Oh, look, I wouldn't say it gets to me big time. <laughs> I, I'd just say it's an utter fabrication. <laughs> <There's no laughs> I mean, fabrication. I think it's a bit of the pot core of the kettle black, I believe. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I'll wear it. It's okay. I'm wearing the robe. I'll wear oh, it. Oh, that is good. You look great in the robe. Thank you very much. It's the first time someone said I look great in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Might be wearing this robe a lot more than just in the boudoir. <laughs> as I said, Beard and Blade, they've been awesome. They're um they're the number one grooming, male grooming products in the world. Everyone out there, go online. I mean, the world in Australia, probably the world as well. Go online. If any of your friends or you boys want more, discount Aces for 15% off and free express shipping. They've got it all. Right now, we've got the styling powder, the hair uh, the pomade, yeah, the and the trimmer. Now, my question to you boys on behalf oh, of- leg. It does. Oh, you I've can't. I've literally got a tattoo almost. Looks like Denver, guy with yeah. the, the, oh, the, the same logo. Yeah, he's got tats, but it's like the muzzy. Is that the one on your quad? Yeah. I little, see, yeah, leg, that yeah. Was, saw that. That's a big- have you, you got a few more tattoos now, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've thought about it, but I don't know. I was going to get a couple ones. One was a Nirvana, Nirvana cover. It's called In Utero. I like the shape of it. And then I found out what it meant. So I should probably- What it mean? In. Nah, we'll, uh, we'll yeah. move on. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked good. Lucky you didn't get that. Out like that. <laughs> of the two of you, our first question here from Beard and Blade, who do you think is better, who has better grooming and personal hygiene? To be honest, I reckon we're both pretty clean blokes. You reckon? <laughs> Well, defined clean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Honestly, we're actually not too bad. Yeah, I reckon. Um, so even. Uh, I just don't feel like I'm even with him. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? No, nah, Lonely doesn't doesn't grow hair, so he's fine on that. Well, regard. I shower a lot, and <laughs> I shower a lot. I, I keep my nails very. I'm quite a clean man. Oh, yeah, you can actually cut him for once. Oh, here he is. Yeah, can I got claws? <laughs> yeah. Usually this guy's going for the Guinness World Record for the longest <laughs> fingernails. <laughs> They're curling around. He's like, hey, why, how are That's so fun. <laughs> so much grime under these guys' oh, fingers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that acts like I'm a chain smoker with all the grime. <laughs> That's brilliant. So you say even. You both... Or oh, you, you can't cop line, you've been. Cop <laughs> you <laughs> you just want to see better. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> you, mate. <laughs> no, he's not too bad. All right, well, I'm lucky with that. Now, the second one, this is my favourite one. When it comes to the private parts, what kind of operator are you both when it comes to the old meat and tennis balls? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Do you want to answer that one, mate? How does this work? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, the meat's your snag and the tennis balls are your agates. Oh, I, 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 I figured, but what are they trying to find out? Performance so you, or? No, no. So are you a, are you trim, you let it grow like the great Amazon, like our mate Kizza from Teed Up Podcast last week. You shave, no, you wax. I'm pretty trim. Trim. I, I shave as well. 
shave yeah, down I'll there. Yeah, I'll shave. I'll shave my, my whipper, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, I reckon I might be using this because I'm not going to be using it on my face. I can't grow a beard. If it's anything remotely close to this face, he's got like the Asian hairs, you know, the yeah. the real yep. spread out long ones. Yep. I reckon that's probably you. Oh, the long <laughs> Johns. The, you know the, one? the isolated <laughs> ones. Yeah. Right. Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'm Mr. Dingleberry. <laughs> You've been looking into my arsehole, have you? <laughs> oh, I lost uh, that time. I had to get that one out of the way. Like, sometimes you can't avoid it. You get some combs as well. Oh, boys. fantastic. <laughs> Look at this. I'm so much doing the berries in here. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, Gives it to the man who's receding. <laughs> I mean, real handy. I'm honestly worried one comb of lady's hair is just going to come out. <laughs> the man with a hat on while it's exactly, raining. Yeah, I'm not the man. only man with a toupee. <laughs> we know another man with a toupee. <laughs> Gerald fuck it, Trump. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So talented. Oh, <laughs> so oh, talented. Boys. Very, very good. I'll wow. get these out your way for I the- I was uh, fishing for that coffee. <laughs> no, no, it's like, you couldn't have just let it slide. <laughs> that is, that is uh, very good. No. Are you hot? Do you want to take no, that I off? No, I am that hot. I'll take that off now. Oh, I'm actually I'm not sweating. sure if that hair rolling into your ears from the shower or you're sweating. <laughs> but I'm so hot right now. It's all right. We'll keep it going. What do we got under there? Just, just let me look. Oh, it's hot hair. <laughs> oh, <Stop. laughs> he hates it when you do Stop. that. Brutal. What do you mean? It's brutal. <laughs> Fuck you, mate. It's so hectic. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, honestly. Hair looks good. Well, <laughs> oh, <cocky>. <laughs> <laughs> God damn you, Ross. How do you say that? With Ross, face? there it is. There it is. I told you, I told yeah, you. He, he wins the bet. Out. He goes, you'll call me Ross as soon as we're getting him 100%. on. 100%. He on the hates nose. it too. So for any of our listeners who listen to this and really want to get under the nasty skin, you can't say anything in a match that's going to throw him off more than, <laughs> I'll be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it goes? Yeah, it's oh, right. Give us one more of that. Yeah. That's good. I'll be there for you. <laughs> and then it's something like the stars above. I don't know what I want to show. That is good. Fuck, yeah. boys. What a start here. Yeah, oh, it's wow. Good, I must say, I would, yeah, now that, that robe looks elite on you. Thanks, mate. It's also going to probably cause some sort of medical emergency. <laughs> <laughs> you can, so I can really feel the yeah. sweat underneath here. But you if I vomit. That bad after this. <laughs> Unbelievable scenes. <laughs> well, you're going to cop it because you're going to be at dinner with me unless the miso comes, which is probably more likely to happen. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. You got yeah. nothing. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on from the banter. Let's go yeah. straight back to Aussie yeah. Open, though. And if you let's are talk, uncomfortable, let's, take that off while we're um, yeah, let's talk while we're talking. Yeah, we'll get the pipes out, mate. Thank you, much. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. Oh, look at that barrel chest. Yeah, get the barrel out, mate. Now I always be lactating on us. <laughs> oh, bro, you're that way. I know. I told you. <laughs> it's hot under there. Yeah. Cocky, um, I was like, I can't get it off. <laughs> hey, do, it's a great jacket. Does Beard and Blade do some fucking some deodorant? Some deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. Are you in the right shape? No, nah, I'm in career worst, mate. Seriously, it's yeah, on all the your arms, levels mate. of career best is high. Ah, the nasty. This guy, I don't know you where know he puts it. You know, he's getting tubby when like, he takes his shirt off, and you know how people's belly buttons are like a little circle. He just goes into just like a flat line where you're just like, <laughs> yeah, cheers, mate. That's a genetic predisposition that I cannot change. Right? <laughs> this guy sits on his high horse because he smacks forty five liquor martes, <laughs> has about three hundred sweet potato chips and four steaks. Wakes up the next morning about two percent body. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not fair, is it? No, it's not fair at all. I don't know where he puts it. Seriously, I've never seen a bloke eat faster or eat more than this guy. <laughs> yeah. Somehow he just doesn't put any weight on. It's the genes. Yeah, it might have something to do I've with always it. said that. Professional fitness traders also tracking his every movement <laughs> <laughs> and making sure he runs 40Ks a day. I'm fucking tracking my movement. <laughs> 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 if they're tracking the look mothers, I'm in some strife. Mm. Uh, you got two weeks off, but let's go back. And yeah. um, Aussie Open, the uh, Andy Murray. I was away, so I, was, I unfortunately missed... Um, the Aussie Open. Yeah, Mexico. Wow. JK, um, his wedding. And I was watching on tally. Mate, we've already had our podcast. So we've really mm. dissected his eye and the sunnies and how oh, long didn't it went. did he make a dramatic yeah. about himself? <laughs> I did in Mate, the ever. On, on his, on his uh, Insta, for everyone asking all the millions of fans <laughs> around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, let's just go do it. They don't, he's asking the guys, I've got, got an actual serious problem. He's back in a day. He's fine. <laughs> Mate, you saw me eye. It's red of the devil's appendage. I told you this. He had pink eye and he's tried to make it dramatic as if something bad's happened. Unbelievable. There's two sides to the story. It was the Zika virus. <laughs> Have you known? Under the quilt is Miso Drop Off. <laughs> 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 That's the most outrageous banter I've ever heard. I'm sorry, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's a lovely lady. Yeah, she is, mate. 
Do you ever not, like, when, when yeah, I'm not going to bring up what you said the other day. About six of them. <laughs> These lungs are out of control. This is what we want. We want chaos. Please don't. All right, all right. I can't. Um, I've got to gather myself here. Sorry, when he, just before we get right into the ins and outs of that game, yeah. when you see Loney in the box, mate, do you ever actually laugh? Like He makes me laugh if I see him anywhere, right? If you're, or you just, that in the heat of battle, you don't even think about it. I'm, I'm actually happy you kept the glasses on because he had one eye. That was like, it, was like, <laughs> well, it was like a cyclops. I couldn't. I was going to wear an eye it. patch. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If he wore an eye patch to the game, I would be you're like, done. you're done in three Yeah, you're going to have to leave. Yeah, he said that to me. I said, Thanos, I can either wear the glasses or the eye patch. I showed the eye patch, put him on. He's like, put it on, put it on. He's like, if you wear that, bro, I'm never speaking to you ever again. That's shit. Game over. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, okay. Sun as it is. And then he wore the Ray-Bans. I've given him 15,000 pairs of Ricks. Oh, no, and he wore the Ray-Bans. No, no, it's not. There's a time to wear the Rixies was uh, at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> when Cocky was going fifth set. And the tiebreaker with Andy Murray. I glasses too. I had it like stitched up with some gaffer tape. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, nah, I do. I can't take him seriously most of the time. But when he was in the box, he's actually all right. Because he's seen me train in that. But mm. if I ever like invite him to do a tan run or something like that, I can't like. I run out of breath way too quick because he's just trying to crack gags the whole time. <laughs> Speaking of, we have one. but um, Yeah, we do have a ripper, but we'll but, get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. I can't. The worst was not during the doubles. During the doubles, I couldn't take him seriously last year. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's out there and he's doing a pump. I'm literally warming up in the gym and he's doing like curls and shit, like making it all about him. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> he sees Tennis Australia, fucking Channel 9 or whatever, filming before the match and Lone is oh. just in the back. <laughs> he's like, Clocky, you reckon I'm looking... Do you reckon I'm looking big, mate? <laughs> <laughs> you this. Every this time. This is great. Oh, wow. I Lonely's can't believe like, it. Stop telling everyone the truth. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I'm going to sing out of the TV in a second. <laughs> <laughs> no. I feel like Alex Mack on ABC. So it's straight to a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be serious. Nah, no, he is good because he's actually seen, he's one of the few guys that have seen, as ridiculous as he is sometimes, he's seen all the work I put in and, mm. and all the training. So when it comes to something that's serious, I can actually, um, I can appreciate it. Appreciate my boy Loney being there. I'd rather have him there for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And the match as well, like you great you take away a lot of confidence from that, even though you didn't get the result you're after. But man, that was have yeah. you ever played that late before? No, that's that's absurd. I've, I've had some late matches in Acapulco, but they start really late and it hasn't been like a five setter. Second, I think second longest finish in Australian Open history. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all the camera you have to get. Loney's the camera. Loney making it about him again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, that was it. Was cool. It was. I don't know how many energy caffeine gels I had during that match. Oh, during yeah, the match, it was, it was crazy. I just had. I really enjoyed it. That was something that was uh, a crazy match. Obviously, the result wasn't what I wanted. Um, two sets, love and five two. Still hurts a little yeah. bit. Not gonna lie, but um, I remember the the week or two after that, everyone coming up to me, mate. What happened? Oh, what a match, mate. But what happened? Every time I was like, no, this, I'm not going out anymore. Yeah, had yeah, yeah. I was staying at the Crown. I'd just go for like a war. And that's all I was getting. It like, would be annoying listening to yeah. like. I just wanted a late Mac as one night. It's probably the day after or something. I roll in for a McFlurry <laughs> nugget combo or something like that. <laughs> and some better rolls in with his fucking shirt loose and a tie to the side and his like chest pubes like. For, you know, he's, like oh. he's like, mate. You're fucking shit, mate. What happened? I was like, oh, I'm so close to throwing my McFlurry at this oh, guy. It's brutal. Yeah, not it's what brutal I need to hear. There. It's but, brutal. That's one of the few matches where I've lost and I'm like, I really enjoy that. The crowd was unreal. The atmosphere was unreal. Insane. Um, yeah, I wish it, it happened a bit earlier so a few people in Australia could have watched it. The ones that stayed up, hell of an effort. Because, um, yeah, I was, I was pretty distraught after, but it was a, uh, it was a cool moment after um, Andy came around to the locker room and he apologized like during the match or at the end of the match. And then he came after. He's like walking over to me and I was like pretty distraught. He's like, I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> and I've just given it the fuck you. <laughs> yeah. He sent you a really nice message. But yeah, no, nah, well, he's a ripper. We, uh, yeah, we gave each other a hug and it was, uh, mm. it was a pretty cool moment. And then he sent me like this massive message on Instagram being like, um, keep going the way you're going. You mm. have big things ahead this year. Um, I wasn't really expecting that level of tennis from you and all that. So he was giving me, he was giving me good props. And he's one that when I came onto tour really uh, took me under his wing. I played doubles with him a couple of times and kind of mentored me a little bit. So as miserable as he looks on court, he's actually a ripper bloke. So yeah, that's he's, awesome. he's a good man. That's great to know. It's yeah. great to know. And you take a lot of confidence again, like I said yeah. before, out of a champ like him, mm-hmm. you know, you challenging him and then him following up. Does he yeah. give you some actual like advice? Like, mate, your serve here was unbelievable. I found it tough to yeah. risk. Like, does he give you actual pointers? Yeah, he did. He gave me, we we're going to have a, we've got to have a proper conversation. He said like, I'd be keen to have a chat if you're, if you're willing down the track, but he did give me a, 
a message saying like your serve was one of the better I've faced in my career and he's one of the better returners going around and I don't know how many times I aced him I needed every mm -hmm. one uh, to make it competitive like that but yeah that's uh, that's big praise coming from him yeah that's mint yeah he also said some really good things I think in terms of like your improvement because yeah. Thanasi played him in Glasgow and Davis Cup a few years back was it 2015 was it or bent me over yeah and it was a much you know more one-sided scoreline in Murray's favour and then obviously Thanasi uh, Andy saw the improvement that Thanasi had made on the court and was like mate this is Insane. Like you're, you're a completely different player to the player I played Yeah, that's in brilliant. Glasgow. So Speaking of, playing him in Glasgow was something else atmosphere-wise. Mm. Like playing in Australia with home support's crazy, but that was like a smaller venue indoors from his hometown and he'd kind of wait before the whole team got announced and he was the last one announced and he'd kind of lap it up a little bit late. But that atmosphere was some of the craziest I've played against. I'd hit a let and the crowd would cheer. I'm like, fuck. Mm -hmm. Oh, is, really? Yeah, that was nuts. What, one -on -one. what is the best atmosphere that you've played in? That's up there. Um, that's definitely up there. The Murray match was cool. I had, I've had good atmospheres in Mexico. I was going to um, say that. Cool a big shout out to the Hornado, Timmy Horn, who um, has married a Mexican and he's from the. He, he told me to ask you about. Yeah. Um, how do you pronounce it? Aca, Aca, Acapulco. Yeah. In Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Crazy atmosphere. So what atmosphere? they're known for, like if Mexico gets a decent tennis player playing for them, they're going to go nuts because the support they get is crazy. I feel Mexican when I'm playing there. I had, I had like people chanting my name around the stadium. Um, That's unreal. Corky in you know, like a little Spanish <laughs> accent. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, but Acapulco is known for like, because it's so hot there and so humid. They start their matches so late and they have these parties uh, that go to like 4, 5 a.m. like on site. So it's like hotel, courts and the beach. And then they have like these makeshift parties there every night. So it gets pretty loose. That's um, elite. I didn't do it this year. I went to Dubai instead just to kind of change it up because my sleeping patterns are just cooked after I go there. But the Mexicans really get behind it. The atmosphere is crazy. Definitely one of the best venues to play at. That's me. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that's great. Dude, well, how do you adapt in those kind of, you know, mm. in those conditions? Just hydration and everything yeah, else? Yeah, hydration as well. You sweat so much. That sometimes makes it the hardest part of like literally gripping your racket. Your shorts are literally like you've come out of swimming pool. They're like all rolled up. Um, it's, uh, it's very tricky to play against. Everyone cramps there just because they've lost so yep. much fluid. Um, but it's, it's as well the timing of the matches. You start so late. It was like the Murray match. Like you can play matches at like 11, to, uh, 11 12 uh, at night. So that's just the adjustment. That's tough. Why was the Murray match? So I was, I'll never forget it. I landed, I think I landed in LA and I was in an Uber, I'm pretty sure. And I was on my own at the time. And I was like getting updates on my app of like, yeah. I couldn't get, I couldn't stream. Yeah. And um, I was, it was just ridiculous. I was looking at the time. I'm like, is my phone cooked here? Yeah. Anyway, why was it so late? Was there a reason why? Started late. It was a weird AI. But why did it start me. so late? <clears throat> just because the chicks match before went ages. Right. So they had like a not before um, a certain time. And it was, a, it was a strange AO. So I played my first round over two days. So we went on and off again. I was playing Fognini and went on and off again six or seven times. We'd literally come on, warm up, have the three minute warm up. And then I'd have to go back on off, off court because of the rain. And there was this little like player area and then we'd come back on. And then I was like five points away. So then I had to play five points the next day, but I didn't know. So you got to prepare like it's like a full match again. Mm. So it was, it's one of the craziest Aussie Opens I've experienced. I literally came back, played five points, had to go through my pre-match warm-up, everything like that, played five points and then won my next round. But everything got pushed back due to weather. So we the just weather. started really late and there was a chicks match that went ages. So that's one out. thing I reckon in tennis, it's really hard to grapple with for like yeah. the top tier players, like because of all of the time schedules, it's like not before a certain time. So you can be getting ready. Like the Nasi can be like underground, getting ready, preparing with his trainer. And then the other player comes back, wins the yeah, set. I, and then he's I back, literally did like four more months. Back in the cafe. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like you get ready, you're pumped up for the match. You've taken your energy gels, you're ready to go. And then all of a sudden someone comes back, wins a set. Then you're back in the locker room, just sitting there. Yeah. It's tough. I don't know how, how players, I know a lot of NBA players have their like pregame naps and stuff. I can't, my mind's racing. I try mm. and have my eyes shut. They had like a little rest area at AO and I'm just lying there with a towel on me trying to sleep, but I just know I've got an important match coming up. I just can't, can't get a lick of sleep. So I don't know how people do it. Yeah. If anyone's got any napping tips, let me know. Yeah. It's hard to switch off when you know what's coming. <clears throat> how do you prepare? Like I spoke to a couple of the boys, we had Jai, Simkin and Clayton uh, Oliver. They like to stay relaxed, but they're animals game day. So they're, they're, their cues like. 
pretty much when the balls bounce, then they turn into animals because yeah. they reckon they waste too much energy. Mm. Um, you're saying you can't really switch off. Like, how That's do you- the ideal way to do it for sure. I feel like football might be easier in that regard where you can kind of make it a bit more physical. You can kind of run a little bit harder, kind of give a couple bumps or, or maybe tackle a bit harder. Tennis, there's a lot more sort of, I feel like, feel involved. So you can't be too amped up all the time because then although you're trying hard and your intensity is there, like it's, I'm assuming it's a little bit similar to kicking for goal. If you're too amped and you want to kick it too hard or something like that or too far, you kind of lose your bearings a little bit. So for tennis, you want to have that intensity, but you want to stay relaxed stay as well calm, in your hand. Because yeah. if you're too tight in your hand and too amped up, then you're going to spray ball. So that's where it makes it tough, I think. When you're warming up, I know when we used to like warm up pre-game, like that's the atmosphere. Like it's all different. You know, you're at training, there's no one there, you're smoking balls, you're doing all these things. But then when the atmosphere is there, mm. the touch is so important. So pre-game, yeah. you know, you start, I'd imagine with footy, like, you know, you're kicking goals. But if you're shanking a few in the warm-up, you've only got like a 10-minute warm-up mm. before the balls bounce. And then when you're out in the field it's yeah. tvs eyes on and yeah. the crowd you want that touch to be nice and smooth yeah. for you when you're warming up is that is that a real critical time it and is. if you're not getting that touch is it really tough to kind of start a game knowing you want more warm up it is it is and it's so different i've tinkered with a few sort of warming up techniques but ultimately i just go back to what i've done since i was a kid you warm up for like half an hour maybe a couple hours before the match you get some food and then you do a physical warm up before your five minute warm up on court with your opponent but yeah it's weird you can kind of see how how well someone's feeling the ball in that little five minutes. Um, I remember I played uh, Alcaraz um, at India account. Wells. Freak. He's Made silly. Freak. Yeah. And I had the warm up and just how from the first ball, his intensity and how hard he was hitting it just in the five minute warm up. Usually you, know, you feed it and you kind of get a bit of rhythm and he's out there crushing the ball. I remember the first point of the match he serves to me. I hit a decent point in return and he just lasers a winner past me. Like zero nerves. And I was like, holy fuck, I'm, I'm in some strife here. And I looked at, I looked at my coach and, uh, I was like, yeah, this kid's a freak. Like I was literally looking at him. I'm like, I don't know how he's so intense all the time. Like how he's built like a little ball. He's so quick. He hits the ball that hard. I remember almost laughing. Like it was three and three. So it's like comfortable match for him. But like score kind of helped me out a little bit because I came off the court and I was like, fuck, this kid's just better than me. Like, yeah. But a genuine question from my end as well. Like I've said this a lot of times, maybe even to you and like a lot of guys that I know are like off mic. Like I reckon his level is insane. Like, and I'm not just saying that to like blow smoke either. Like- we're mates, but like I've watched a lot of tennis and I reckon his level is far higher than his ranking would suggest, right? So in your opinion, then, is like how much is mental, like how much does that come into it? Like do you, you just mentioned that first point, like when he laced that shot past you, you're already looking at your box going far out. But like- I've never seen anything like that. But how much <laughs> is that mental? Because I also reckon that your game and your forehand is like maybe the best- like the best forehand in the world. So when I play guys, I feel like I've usually got that edge or some people might have a better serve than me, but I, like it's very rare that they have a better combo. I feel like when I'm playing my best, I feel like my serve and forehand is like it. And okay, maybe my serve's better than Carlos, but I was like, holy shit, his forehand is elite. Like mm. it is, I can safely say on that day, especially it was definitely better than mine. And he's proven it's, it's elite. But that first ball you hit, I was just like, I've come off court twice being like, I don't know what I could have done there. Okay, I could have played a lot better both times, but a lot of it's because they didn't let me. One was Djokovic at Wimbledon and one was Alcaraz at Indian Wells and I came off the court and I'm like, this kid's a freak. I felt like his top level was the best I've ever played against. But I remember even on. when you were playing in Adelaide against Chilich and you were saying to your box, like, this guy's – Yeah. Like, but you ended up winning that match. Yeah. So, like, how much of that mental, like, do yeah. you think is – A lot of the top guys, as good as they are as well, you've got to try and keep it tight for as long as possible because then they're not able to play as free. When they're up – the front running ability is crazy and then they show their full arsenal. So if you can keep it tight, maybe then you kind of get a couple cracks, but if they get a break early and they're feeling it, it makes it makes it bloody tough. Mm. Just on that, so as you know, I'm learning a lot about tennis. I don't know. I literally just follow, you know, you, Kiggs and a few others, right? Um, all the Aussies. You just said he started the game, the warm up and the game hot. It just looks so locked in. Do you take that into your game and go, I'm going to do this next time and just really pound the ball early in the yeah. warm-up? Or no, that's not your route. That's not your thing. Like, yeah, do you take well, that I, try, I tried to do one. He came to net and I tried to whiz one past him and I hit it so far long. I was like, poor. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Tried to, yeah. bro, bro, I tried to hit one. He went sailing past. I'm like, fuck, I hope the crowd didn't pick up on that. <laughs> and he came into I'm like, yeah, I'm going to show him a bit here. I go bang and it just sailed long. I was like, geez. Wow. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of sticking to your game plan. Not yeah. trying to. So yeah, there's a bit of that as well. Yeah. Well, I, I made the adjustment a while ago in my career because I used to come out in matches and I'd used to spray errors and there's nothing worse than getting broken first game for me. That's why I usually tr try to return first. I used the first game to kind of 
find a bit of rhythm and then hopefully I'm warm when my serve comes and then find that way and at least go 1-1 one, one into the first uh, after we both serve. And yeah, this one backfired on me. I went 0-2 oh, pretty quick and I just wasn't feeling it from the start. But after playing him, I was like, fuck, I see what the hype's about. Like, I think if he stays healthy, he could be literally one of the that, guys. That's interesting, isn't it? That yeah. that start to the, you know, the game is like, you know, getting that 1-1 one, one or getting two up. Yeah. Because if you are down to love two, it's, it's you know, I'd imagine mentally you're yeah. thinking, got to be more aggressive or, yeah. wow, this set's getting away from me. Maybe yeah. like, is that what goes through your head during the first set if you're down, say like, Four nil. Yeah, it's tough because then you're like, oh, um, especially if there's a big crowd. I remember there was a it was a Saturday night and it was packed at Indian Wells and there weren't that many rallies. He was whizzing the ball past. I hadn't kind of found my rhythm and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna like make a couple balls and find the rhythm. And then I was dropping it short, just playing too safe, and then he was crushing winners. So I'm like, shit, I'm in some strife here. Like I don't know. And then you play too aggressive and you miss. So when you get behind the eight ball early, it makes it tough to kind of to kind yeah. of get back. But yeah. yeah, lot to be said for practicing as you play too, don't you think? Like yes. I mean. Those Spanish guys, maybe I'm generalizing here, but I know that you hit with Nadal before and you said that he hits that cover off the ball and the hit up as yeah. well. Alcaraz is exactly the same. I don't know if like all the Spanish guys do that, but like, do you try and put that into your game or like, how do you find that you practice in comparison? Did you try to emulate match yeah, scenarios? Yeah, I, I try and, it's not something I used to do. Um, when I was younger, I used to not train that well. Um, I used to kind of just wait for game day and then kind of amp it up. But now I'm trying to make it uh, sort of more similar. Now I think I'm almost a better practice player sometimes than match player. But when I was younger, it was completely the other way. Um, but yeah, he was one of the few guys that a lot of guys in practice kind of show how big they hit it and then play the match and they play a bit safer. Raf is one of them. Um, Akaraz is the hardest hitter I've played against for sure. He's, wow. He Young plays well, isn't big he? compliment. Yeah, he's 19 or 20 now. And he, um, yeah, youngest ever world number one. He in the match, I was just like, geez, this guy. Is he, do you reckon he's the next big thing? Yeah, he is for sure. He's, he won so. US Open. Like he's yeah. already yeah. What's, stamped his. What's crazy is his coach, um, Juan Carlos Ferreira, got to number one in the world. And he uh, he's almost eclipsed his prize money already <laughs> at 19. <laughs> That's insane, yeah. isn't it? And Juan Carlos Ferreira was a gun yeah, as well. Yeah, hell of a player. Like, Great ridiculous. career. Yeah. On yeah. Grand Slams, I think. And yeah. There's, yeah. Um, obviously, you got to beat the best, you know, to be yeah. the number one and win these trophies. But when the draw comes out, like – you must hate having to match one of these guys in the first round in big tournaments. Not not hate yeah. it, but it's like, because oh, you get prize money as you get deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd I, rather meet them a little bit deeper just for the insurance. Yeah, I feel like I've had that a lot actually. Or if my first rounds hasn't been too bad, I've had a top 10 guy straight after. And I've, and I've pushed a lot of them. I had a golden opportunity in Miami. I had five match points, which was crazy and didn't take it. So that one hurts as well. That one's there hey, with the Murray one. All learnings, all yeah, learnings. Yeah, exactly. So... But I mean, that's that's the reward they get for playing week in, week out and getting their ranking up. So ultimately, that's my goal to get seeded in Grand Slam so I don't have to face those guys sort of first or second round. Oh, is that how it works, does it, with the seed? Yeah, if you're a top yeah. 32 seed, you don't play a seed until the third round. Oh, and I think I that's a that. good thing about TK right now. He's got like uh, basically no points to defend for the rest yeah, of the year. I've right? had a really strong start and I've got barely any points to defend for the rest of the next, what are we, in April? Um for the rest of the year. So if I just oh, wow. maintain where I'm at, mm. I think I was like 25 in the race or 30 in the race um, this year. So I've had a really good start and yeah, hopefully I can keep it up. That's the hardest part is maintaining over the course of a year. Yeah. 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 And is, has this been the most consistent you've been with your body and yeah. your performances for your career? Yeah, for sure. This is the most consistent. Obviously I won that title in Adelaide last year and we won the doubles, but I'm trying to play a lot less doubles this year Yeah, because it kind of affected me back end of playing as much singles tournament. Although that was a cool experience, I want to try and get my ranking to where I think it, it should be. So that's that's my goal this year. Just on that, I have to ask, Special K, we missed it this year. Mm. I uh, I was hurt. shattered, but I wasn't there. So I was yeah. like, well, this is good for me. That's probably yeah. the only person that was good for. But um, the whole of you know, Melbourne and Australia was shattered. Mm. Is Special K coming back next year? That's the plan. Yeah, we're planning to play this year. Um, I wasn't sure. I'm going to see how Nick's injury goes. We weren't sure if we're going to play French Open. I know Wimbledon just changed their doubles format to three sets instead of five sets, which makes it more singles player friendly. Um, yeah, we're going to try and play where we can, but we were not going to play as much as last year. But next year in Aussie, I think we'll I think, run it back. Yeah, I think it, it, it was. it's going to be massive. Yeah. Two years you've made. It'll be two years by the time. Everyone will yeah. be just G'd up. But as I said, I've always wondered how much toll it doubles takes out of your mm. singles. Because, you know, as Aussies, we want to see, you know, one of these boys yeah. hold up the trophy Absolutely. for the singles. Yeah. And like, you can just imagine how much fatigue, yeah. you know, you don't get much sleep as well, mm. especially if you're pushing these midnight games. Yeah, like, there's, there's no doubt it takes a back step to your singles career. If you both lose early or you don't have the result you want, then, of course, it's, a, it's an awesome thing. And obviously, it was one of the best moments of my career for sure. But singles is the goal now. We don't feel like we want to achieve anything more in doubles. It's a... 
It's awesome. The crowd loves it. We have a lot of fun playing it, but singles is where it's at. But again, like if we played this year after the Murray match where I finished it, 4 a.m. or whatever it was, I would have had to have played doubles the next day and I couldn't have yeah. thought of anything worse, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, like, you would the have been last struggling. thing I wanted to do But the was bizarre thing doubles. was that I found, like, when these guys were playing doubles like Nick and Thanasi, like, the atmosphere was insane. Like, yeah. nothing I've ever seen, right? And an Australian pair won the Australian Open doubles this year and they're both great players and ripping blokes, but the atmosphere wasn't the same. You know what I mean? Like, it, there's something about the special Ks teaming up. No, there is. That, it, that, that you know excites the uh the next gen it does the next gen love it yeah. i know my cousin jimmy is i think he's 18 when this comes out happy birthday jimmy boy but yeah. um yeah. but he yeah, was jimmy. there with his mates sending me photos he's like mate this mate. joint's going off they're I all carrying on and i'm and thinking right. where are you he's not even on the main court remember yeah. he's on that other court yeah, and he there goes mate, be so many kids in your brother and uh, your uh, cousin yeah your cousin's demographic mate i'd look left to right i'll be sitting front row i'd watch their matches and i'd just watch all these kids <laughs> front row like ah, go, cubby, go kids <laughs> fuck ah! like scream Screaming, mate, like literally like doing everything they could to get into the match, put off the other opponents. Like that was skits, man. Yeah, like, it didn't feel like doubles. It, it felt was like just, a happy Gilmore f- yeah. cutscene or something. Like yeah. it was just insane. Like people were basically jumping over the banisters. And for the first time in my life, I actually saw the AO security stressed. With, with the cameras that were following you at the time, they could almost do another doco. I'd imagine yeah. they have a lot of B-roll mm. footage. They could just cut up and do another one. Well, there's another Netflix doco coming out this year. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I think they could have made it more dramatic. They missed a couple key spots, which could have been, I mean, we talked about that fight with the Croatians last time. Were they filming then? They they didn't have the cameras in, but there were cameras like CCTV or whatever, uh, up at the top. So if that got caught, it would have been, it would have been (laughs) chaos. But I remember like, they had the cameras in the locker room like while I was getting changed. Like I did. Oh, I'm serious. Like I had, a, I had the towel like there and they were just like, there's a guy there and I could see the little red dot recording. I'm like, bro, like. <laughs> you sure that was Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> and the brothers. <laughs> we got a custom couch, dude. <laughs> the Nazi so Kokonakis. Only fans. <laughs> Coming soon. Speaking the of. The cock. And the cock. <laughs> the cock. <laughs> Tennis gets tough. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, that's brilliant. And how's Kiggs going? He's good, yeah. Recovering off his knee injury. I think he's liking having a bit of time home. Um, he's playing a bit of basketball here and there. But uh, he said French Open's touch and go. So fingers crossed for him. He's back. I know the tour misses him. And uh, yeah, I think he's back posting some stories saying, don't worry, I'll be back chopping people soon. So, <laughs> is that what he's posting? Uh, it's good to see his confidence has taken a hit. Yeah. He's yeah, yeah, <laughs> funny bloke. Very he's, funny. It's great. Yeah. A lot of marketing appeal about you boys, and uh, like you just said, there's yeah, it's insane. It's a different. Is it just I think everyone just wants to say you two, AO, yeah, doubles and singles, but the we're doubles to, is a bit of insurance. We're trying to get on a cereal box. So yeah. we'll see, that'd I be think, pretty cool. I think you should. Yeah. I think there's, I think we're all eating special K yeah. that month. I reckon. I reckon <laughs> yeah. everyone is. And like I'll you probably said, end up eating it. Thought <laughs> 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 you've been eating too much. <laughs> 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 that's a low blow. Oh, oh, just special K well. is good for you. That's a low blow. I probably wouldn't get any in anyway because he's so tight. <laughs> That's just, How have you just turned the joke back on me? <laughs> Speaking of, mate, I've had about eight coffees. Like, literally, I was looking down before. I've got the jitters. That is brilliant. No, it's just on the NBA. Um, obviously, the finals is on. We're going to go through that. You, you like the NBA as well? Or not, not, as much, not as much, man. I'm a terrible basketballer. See, so the difference is between me and Thanasi. Like, he was actually very good at basketball. So was Nick, and I'm... I was horrific. Like I played a little bit in school, but I was so Can't bad. shoot, don't like it. Nah, mate. The only thing that I saw that was interesting to me in basketball was there was a bloke. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you his name, but about year oh. six, year oh, six we basketball. <laughs> we were playing like competitively year six half court. And this guy was playing such heavy, heavy D on this bloke that he just spewed all over the ground. <laughs> it was the most heavy D I've ever seen. He was just like this. And the guy just panicked, had the ball and just buffed all over the ground. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah. I feel like that's you. Is it you? Did you do that? I was going to say, where's this well, going? I the last pick in the draft. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll take that kid. Yeah. Lunchtime, I was just like the last name to be called out. They're like, oh, fuck and he knows this guy. He knows he's not getting the ball on offense, so no, he just 100%. plays his heart out on defense. <laughs> he's watched me shoot too. It's not pretty. It's oh, that is brilliant. Well, yeah. I won't ask you about these NBA yeah, yeah, questions yeah, coming this, up. This, this man will have some. But answers. you just caught side in Arizona. Yeah, how cool is the Sun Stadium? It was sick. Very cool. Talk to us about that because you were caught side, which is pretty cool. And Very cool atmosphere. That, CP's your boy. Yeah, Jock's there now. Yeah, Jock was there, and on that first day, it was um, Bucks versus uh, Phoenix and Ingles. 
who I knew oh, Joe, growing man. up. Yeah, yeah, plays for the Bucks. So it was good to catch up with him. He gave me the sweatiest singlet of all time after. I was like, yeah, appreciate it, mate. <laughs> Do you have Giannis's? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. That's, wow. That's so brutal. That's all. Awesome. I was like, that. yeah, thanks, mate. But do you have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was sick. Oh, Joe, I've known Joe for a while. It's good to see him back after the ACL. And uh, he, he played well. He, he looks like it. Pops out there, but uh, <laughs> it was um no, it was sick. And then yeah, Jock um, loves a three, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's got the explosiveness to get to the room anymore. <laughs> Just sits there and does that like <laughs> the slingshot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's good to have. So two two great teams. So it was, it was awesome to watch that Booker up close and see see Paul again. I uh, hadn't seen him in years, so it was awesome to catch up with him a little bit. Yeah, and, you uh, met CP like years ago. Didn't yeah, you? yeah. We spoke that last yeah, time. Yeah, Did yeah. you actually catch up yeah, outside yeah. of the court? Or a little bit. I spoke to him a little bit before when he was like in the warm ups and that. Um, it was it was pretty cool. It's crazy to hear everything they say like during mm. the match. And guys are so big. I remember the the match after it was um, Phoenix and and Orlando and Bol Bol. Is there, you know, Bol Bol, yeah. mate, he looks huge. Tall. Like, so Long. tall and lanky. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. But, yeah, a couple of good games. Sitting court sides are different. Especially when you're sitting down. Yeah. Like, you're looking up, and then they're just giants. Yeah, we were there where the inbound was on the side, and I was like, mate, Bol is huge. <laughs> like, his wingspan, like, yeah. yeah. if someone like that played tennis and was coordinated, it'd be game over. Mm. Oh, their server be yeah. off the charts. What, um, did they, did you get a win in, at the Suns? Did they win? Lost to the Bucks because Giannis, like they couldn't stop Giannis. He's it's crazy. Freak, he man. just drives, spins, and he either gets fouled or dunks. Mm. Even, and he makes a couple free throws now, so he's consistent enough from there, but he is, He's a different beast. Giannis is a tennis fan as well, isn't he? Yeah, he loves yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he followed me in January, which is pretty yeah. nice. Oh, really? Followed yeah. him on the ground. That's yeah, huge. that was huge. That's huge. Yeah, I was huge. like, I had to do a double take. I just woke up. I was like, what? I was yeah. like, and he didn't follow that many people. I was like, yeah. Giannis, bro. Yeah, it's nuts. That's epic. He yeah. didn't follow me. Didn't follow me. His yeah, brother's got the same name as me as well. You're going to get that tour. I told you, the US tour. <laughs> still waiting, mate. We'll see. We'll see. Still waiting. <laughs> yeah. His so brother, was... Is his brother always going to be there? Yeah, I think so. I, I saw a thing with a couple of execs that said if Giannis wasn't there, would be he'd be on an NBA roster, and they said no. So, yeah. Tough. But yeah, it's ruthless. when you got Giannis, whatever makes him happy, you got to keep him there. He's just he's, so good. He's silly. And I, he seems like a real good dude as well. Mm. Like how hard he works, how humble he is. Very, like, yeah. Like dad jokes. He's, yeah, he's very yeah. down to earth. Yeah. Yeah, they're, do they're you think he's MVP? Injury. Oh, it's tight. I know it's a three, There's three a lot horse of- race. I think Embiid's probably going to get it just because he kind of keep. He's playing unbelievable, but he kicked up a bit of a fuss. It'd be weird if Joker wins three, but how efficient Giannis has been and just what he does with that team. They're just so good. I'll put it here. Okay, you get to draft one right now for your finals team. Who would you pick out of those three? I'm taking Giannis. Yeah, yeah. that's why it's going to be funny. I mean, I'm, I'm probably no, taking no, flinching. No, nah, I'm probably taking Embiid third, to be honest. Wow. I think so. I mean, Embiid's better defensively, but he's not as consist- uh, consistent health-wise as Joker. But I don't think you can go past Giannis. Yeah, Giannis yeah. is special, man. And, and you, you see the players. They reckon they yeah. need three to stop him driving. Yeah. He just runs yeah, They just put pace. a ball around him and then hope that the other guys miss. And Drew Holiday's unbelievable as well. He does it on both hands. Middleton's just getting back to form. But yeah, I, I don't think Jokic has done enough in the playoffs. Um, Embiid's not healthy enough all the time. So I just think Giannis is, is the best by far. All right. Far bit, I think, out of those three. All right, let's go to who do you think is going to win it and who the, who will be playing in the East and West? I'm biased. Phoenix. I think they're looking I hope at, Phoenix wins. Yeah. We want our boy Jock to hold it up. Yeah, the ring. He's a real good dude as well. Yeah, ripper. Um, he wanted to come to a couple of my matches when I was playing a tournament there in Phoenix. So he's a he's a ripper. I think Phoenix, I mean, they're looking good with KD. They haven't played enough matches with him. Um, I just worry about Aiton. I'm not sold on him still every year. He kind of lets me down. He's bit. getting better, though, isn't he? He's is getting better, but I've got to see it in the playoffs. I don't know. He hurts me, but we got an interesting bench. So. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go Suns. Uh, I've got Lakers to upset Memphis as well. I'm not sold on Memphis. I can't stand Brooks. That's why he pisses me off. Yeah. Um, Hasn't he really marketed himself no, no, as the smart, evil villain, kind of, yeah, yeah, the yeah. villain. And, and yeah. to be honest, we love it. Yeah, it's, it's good. It makes for good entertainment. You like I'll, Beverly, you know, you just, yeah. you're like, oh, I want this guy to get beat, but that's yeah. why you watch it. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think Phoenix and I don't know, if in the East it's going to be tough, whether it's Bucks, Sixers or... Celtics. I'm not sold on the Sixers. I'm going to go Bucks or Celtics. I don't know. I'll back Giannis. But I think I think the Celtics are right there. As yeah, well. I think the Celtics as well. This could be the year. Yeah, they just need the the, the injuries is massive. Yeah. Like as, if if Bucks are healthy, because Middleton's yeah. just warming right up yeah. for for finals. It actually, it is literally who's the healthiest at the end of every mm. year, and that's that's what makes the biggest difference. So, yeah, mm. yeah, we'll see. yeah. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, oh, I do want to see like a Phoenix. Bucks or a Phoenix Celtics final, sure. It would be special. Would you yeah. would you have a chance to duck over? No, you'd be playing tennis then. Yeah, I'd be I'd be playing. It'd be in the middle of Europe, so it'd be tough. 
And one more thing, when you're sitting courtside, what are the things that you learn, like the communication, the leadership, like who was someone that stood out when you were sitting courtside and you were up front and, you know, up close with the basketball? It's funny, Paul always looks pissed off just because he's barking at teammates, like trying to get the, the best out of them. Um, Booker complains a lot. He's whinging a lot. He's bloody good, but he, he, loves, yeah. he loves a whinge. But um, the one that stood out and it's just like, I mean, you notice it on TV, but the one that you just like, you can't ignore is Giannis. He's literally can't guard him. He's that long and that tall and that athletic that he literally just takes a couple drives, spins and either finds the open shooter or literally draws a foul and dunks on you. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nuts. Surely watching him, you would have thought he was a monster. Yeah, he's huge. But there's a lot of big, like Brooke Lopez looks ginormous out there as well. Slow as anything, but yeah. like I got his jersey. Huge. I got his jersey in Brooklyn. Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. I bought his, yeah, I bought his jersey. Yeah, Lopez well, is good, man. He's you a collect them, don't you? You've got a few. No, I got a few. No? Only when I travel, like yeah. I'll, wherever I stay, I like to grab a jersey. Yeah. They didn't have. I wanted to buy Jock's jersey in the team store. They didn't yeah. have. Phoenix's store was actually yeah, pretty disappointing. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. They they got the best. I reckon they got the best colors and jersey, yeah. but they didn't have their old, their new one, the valley, the black jersey. Yeah, that the, like, black one with the with the, the orange and yeah, the yeah, yellow cool. and purple. Yeah. I wanted one of them, but they just didn't really have it in there. Yeah. I think you must have to buy it online. Mm. Phoenix Sun, mate, their, their arena was yeah. so cool. It's cool. It's actually, I went to Sacramento a couple of years back and they redid their arena. It's the same, like you walk in, it's like really open. There's the bar out the front. Yeah, there's a big yeah. bars yeah. outside. Yeah. Even on second level, you can yeah. have a beer up the just top watch. and watch yeah. from there. I'd love to go to an NBA game in the States. So who's next level? I've been to a couple of NBL games with Thanasi, but apparently like that doesn't compare to like the atmosphere. NBL, NBL, not quite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. NBL's NBA, it's getting better. It yeah. is getting better, but obviously it's tough to compare with the, the atmosphere over there. Yeah, the NBA, and they just have the best entertainment. Like yeah. it's just non-stop music's pump and you, it's yeah. really hard not to be up and about. Yeah. You just you, you just always got something going. The music, yeah. as I said, the music's pumping. For sure. Then the basketball's on. Then they're yeah. doing t-shirt. They're pumping t-shirts yeah. or they're slingshot and t-shirt. It's like there's just you can't Gee, stop. I'll be working hard to get my mitts on those t-shirts. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like get out of my way, little lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They pump them up. Get out of my like, old woman. <laughs> third, third level. Bang. Anything, anything yeah. that's free for loaning. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> A tight t-shirt as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, get the kids. It's one. not a small. <laughs> Here you go, kid. <laughs> a real tight T-shirt. <laughs> now, I didn't get Speaking you. Speaking of I, tight, I, why are they all over your side? Oh, I've got, <laughs> I've got <laughs> a couple of these. You well. don't need them. Hang on, mate. Yes, I do. I, I still got. <laughs> yeah, mate. You better <laughs> shave the old agates. <laughs> don't forget that <laughs> That's one, mate. mate. Beautiful. Look at that. Now, cocky. I know you don't wear sunnies much, but I got you the brand new Rixies here, mate, for the Europe summer coming up. Do need got those. the Melrose gloss black. They I'm are a big Melrose unreal. Guy. So yeah, why haven't you worn them? Well, he didn't give me those Hang ones. On, so you like one? You like <laughs> them? Well. I'm keeping my elbows in tight because I feel like I got my pits sweating. Yeah, oh yeah, look at them. That's ready to oh, go. Yeah, I, know, I know Cocky doesn't like sunglasses. I don't know. I feel like it's yeah, looks ridiculous. Yeah, you're not a sunglass man, are you? They're great shades, but I just don't know if my head No, they look good. Them. They look good. It looks like Dr. Octavius. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is, but it sounds uh, Me neither. Yeah, right, Drake. Leave them on, leave them on for me. <laughs> leave them on. I know you don't like wearing sunny. No, no, no Blakey. They're yours. Blakey, and if, they, if you don't like them- as well. <laughs> I, didn't get you some, I didn't get you some sunnies because you've got That's 15 right, I got, pairs. I, yeah, I got some. I'm waiting for you to- I'll give you the box. I'm pretty sure I got them in the car. For everyone out there, Rick's all Always use the discount code ACES for 20% off and free express shipping. Yeah. Cocky's rocking the Melrose Gloss Black Sunrise lenses. Now, mate, we normally do Rick's in retirement. Why are you wearing them? I'm just give- just saying this, by the way. I actually really like these shades. I just feel like an arrogant wanker when I wear them. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Not yours. I'm just saying shades in general. <laughs> If, oh, like, people are like, oh, you should get a, you should get a Rolex, or you should get a uh, watch, man. Like, every time I put it on, I'm like, who do I think I? Am? Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I literally put it on. I'm like, what a wanker. So I, I, I reckon up. you're you're right if you wear them. So Americans wear them inside and yeah, in brutal. dark spaces, like today, yeah. like right now, if you're wearing them, it's like, you <laughs> know, <laughs> if I imagine if I walked into this trailer like this, you'd well, be like, fuck. What if I had an eye care. infection though? What if I had an eye infection? <laughs> what if I had a genuine? Excuse yeah, no, yeah, I had uh, pink eye. Yeah, I got pink eye. Yeah, but I reckon I'm all for sunny. It's just when you're inside. Inside, I find yeah. I actually find them hard to look out of. It's a darker, you know, like you know, LeBron wears yeah, them yeah, courtside. Yeah. yeah, it's just like you but have, he can. You know, you can wear them, but it's not a great experience wearing no, sunglasses no. in dark places. But mm. I just feel like people probably already assume I'm a tosser. So if I was to walk around with glasses, that adds to the yeah. You know, it's yeah, accurate. It's yeah, it's tough. Not, not outside. <laughs> not outside. Well, you look fantastic. Although, mate. like, it depends on the occasion. Like, if you, occasion. if you had a little shorty, if you won, if you won the, uh, say, Wimbledon or oh, something. Oh, I'm putting three on. Yeah, I'm putting three you on. You could wear a purple hat and walk around with a yeah. cane and sunnies, and no one about an eyelid. It's like know? when Joe Burrow and the boys smoking cigars after they win, you yeah. know, championships. But they can. They're big dogs. If, if you I win, win Aussie Open, I'm putting them on. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, you can yeah. do what you want. Yeah. 
yeah. boss hunting, go to F1. But if, I, if I'm up two sets to love against Murray in 5-2 and gag that match, I'm probably just taking them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he hasn't moved on yet. No, no mate, so it's a tough one. Like, it's a tough one. Like, I know that would have hurt. Like, that's why. I shed a tear at night. I remember. You have to. Well, well, I don't care. I would have no, cried. I didn't. I didn't go and see Thanasi afterwards because I was like, look, I think he needs nah, plus it was five o'clock in the morning. He was just interested in a winner. <laughs> but, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's always there. Yeah, sorry, mate, I hadn't heard from you two weeks nah, ago. But, yeah. I think I sent you a text that night though. I did send you an Instagram yeah, message. Yeah, so delete my number. Although, <laughs> although <laughs> he only replied to Andy Murray. He didn't reply to me. I, uh, I didn't get a reply. I just got their scene job, but that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I think so. But. When someone, when, when, like I was in the rooms at the Giants the other day and I haven't seen the boys for a while and I, it's, you know, you want to win. You want to see them win. But when you go into a, a losing rooms, oh. it's so tough because yeah. you're like, but if you want to go in there, crack gags, they were fine. Yeah. See, I don't know if it's better or worse um, in a team if mm. you lose together or win together. Like, it'd, be hard, like, it'd be hard in individual. Like, individual is mm. brutal. Because you look at yourself, people are probably double guessing, do I go in now? Or do yeah. I give you some space? Then you're all of a sudden, you're isolated. Yeah. Um, you don't know how to act because you're like, oh, like you did so much to learn. I did such a great job, but, but, should so I have done this? There's some really bad losers out there. Like mm. there's some guys that lose and you can't speak to them. You can't look at them and they look like- Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not gonna say it, but it's bad. Yeah, like, they look like they just do not want to be. It. But like, even you don't want to be that person. Though. No, you can't. Yeah. Like, okay, you win, you lose. Like, does your life change? Not fully. No. Like, well, that's what they say. Be consistent. Like, yeah. just as long as you get, you know, with your performance, yeah. and then the result will take care of itself. But as they say, lose great. But it, I never want to be one of those guys that is like people like scared to like say hi or bad luck nah. after a match. It's like, thanks, mate. You just say thanks. Like, appreciate it. But bro, on. I was like just as Devo. I remember like standing there in the corridor, like when you just went to the locker room, I was standing there with like his trainer and stuff. And I was just like, like I was Devo as yeah. well, man. Like, I was devastated. It didn't help that Andy Murray walked past about two minutes later <laughs> with all the cameras and stuff. He's <laughs> like, thanks, man. Yeah, 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 thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. The worst, the worst, I'll tell you what, the worst moment like feeling on a court is if you lose. And like, as you're packing up their bags, it's like you go to shake hands and as you're packing up the bags, I've got all my fucking caffeine gels, what a waste they were. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've got all my gels. And then the guy, like after they like shake the umpire's hand, then they go back to like give the crowd a bit. Yeah. And then they celebrate oh. and you hear another roar and it's like, oh yeah, fuck, cheers. And, and you literally get in. your bag and just storm off, yeah, don't you? Yeah. 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 You don't want to sign autographs after that no. one. Last thing you want to do is yeah. Yeah. while we're on this before I ask you. <laughs> 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 Cheers, guys. Awesome support. Thank you. <laughs> let's go. Let's break before, <laughs> before we um just get the crowd up your head. <laughs> <laughs> Rouse them up. <laughs> Round two loss. You yeah. Yeah. Imagine if you take his spotlight like and he's like, what's going on there? It's like <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, he's supporting the crowd. You're just fucking giving him something. When you walk down the race, you've just lost. Like, what do you do? Like, what, what, what would you just sit down? Like, literally, you're walking down the race after Andy Murray. What would what would have you done the next hour? Oh, I'm pretty flat for about five to ten. Yeah. Then, sorry, then I muster up the balls to look at my phone. Then I got a bunch of bad luck messages or however the match So you go to the phone pretty early? Yeah, oh, depends how I feel. 15, 20 minutes maybe after. I'll have a scroll from board. I'll eat a couple of lollies because my <laughs> blood sugar's cooked, so I start sweating if I don't. And then I just cop abuse from betters, really. <laughs> oh, people have bet yeah, on it. Absurd. Oh, no, really? Mate, it's absurd. Oh, so tennis, that's where the abuse, I didn't think it was worst, that bad. Yeah, yeah, mate, yeah no, it, it's brutal. It actually, like, I'm not going to say I don't have sympathy for it, but when I see people in other sports, like, screenshot a message mm. from betters or punters, like, whether it's racial, whether it's yeah, you say you know, it, anything but... like that, there's so much of it that it's just like, you cannot mate, pay any so attention. Bad, I know it's so, easier like, said than done. But death threat. Like these people are coming from threat. guys with like no profile or the people are doing yeah, it are, are losers anyway. So it's just like, why do you even pay it any mm. mind? It's it's tough to see because you're still mm. going to see it, but it's one of those things. It's like, it happens in every sport all the time mm. and you just got to try your best to ignore it. And it's funny. They just want to get emotional straight away and they just blast that yeah. message, but don't if they? You're, if you're really polite back, I've never seen anyone more rattled. Like, hey, <laughs> thanks, mate. It wasn't my best today, but appreciate the support. Hope your day's going well. Like, oh, sorry, man. Big fan. Uh, yeah. All the best. Yeah, so yeah, freak out. yeah, yeah. No, that's always the case. That's why sometimes social media can be really tough, you know? With that stuff, it's brutal. Um, mm. Because, yeah, they just, they just, it's, yeah, it's a result based brutal, industry. Man. And if people yeah. are betting on it, and that's the, generally all those people that, that are messaging you for that stuff would be in your, uh, other on your Instagram yeah, or something. Exactly. You wouldn't be your mates. No, so no. yeah, so you go downstairs and then what, you sit there, a bit of recovery and then, you know. Bit of recovery. I usually don't want to, <laughs> it's funny. The best moment is, especially in the Grand Slam, is straight after you win that day because then you're like, fuck yeah, I've got a day off. Like I can cruise. I might have a light hit. 
just eat some food, chill out, and you feel like the man. And then all of a sudden, the next day rolls in, you're like, fuck, I've got to play again. So that's mm. the hard thing with tennis. You always got to keep going. I know footy and some other sports, or I know NBA, they play a lot, but you've got your teammates helping you. It's weird, like, the more you win, the more you play. So you've got to keep going and keep going, and that's the hard part to always get up again. But, yeah, I don't know. After a loss, what I do, I, I, depends how depressed I am. Either I'll catch up with a couple mates or I'm just, like, done in my room hiding for a little bit. Yeah. Um, just watching YouTube shit <laughs> or the next, then, then the next day I'll catch up with my mates. I'm not too bad to be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, it's great insight. It's great insight because everyone's different. And as I said, individual sport, I, I couldn't imagine it at the, at the, you know, where you are. Um, back to Rixies, chuck them on for a second. You've been in Europe for a few, you've both been, you've been in Europe? Summer. <laughs> you got a nice tan. The dictator. <laughs> Sorry, I want to get this because everyone, yeah, everyone's yeah. about to go to Europe and you've yeah. traveled everywhere. Just give us your top three spots where, you know, we normally do Rix in retirement. We've already yep. done this segment with yep. you boys before. Where would you tell people to go this Europe summer? Okay, in Europe, I haven't done it, but I really want to do it this year, Mykonos. Um, I heard that's a – I mean, I'm Greek. I've been to some, some spots, but I haven't done a proper, proper like, loose holiday with my mates, so that's got to be one of them. I love London, but I don't know if it's a full, like, traveling holiday experience spot. Um, I went to – where I go? Where else is really good? I mean, Paris is cool. I've just been there for, for my Paris is a cool spot. But again, I don't know if it's a full holiday spot. I think Mykonos is up there. A couple of places in Italy. Um, what was I going to say? There was one that I had. Oh, I'm butchering it. Is Learning it get me? Ukraine, was it? Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, the weather's uh, not too bad there at the moment. <laughs> it's pretty dark here, but I mean, we're just talking about the weather. I mean, it's, I certainly wouldn't want to go there right now. I hear it's a beautiful place. How sharp is but, he? Uh, like, just, just, just you, Ukraine. Oh, only could be some stuff. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Stay on Mykonos. I'm not one place in Mykonos. Cancel. Like, is there like a you know a beach club that you Apparently, should? No, no, I'm joking. That's fine. No, it's all right. It's just a game. It's a great game. Yeah. Hey, Scorpius. Scorpius. Yeah. So that's apparently the place. That's, that's the place. It's a big beach club. Okay. There's a few others, I think, but apparently that's that's the go-to. I went to, you know what shits me as well? I was going to say Ibiza, but everyone from Spain says Ibiza and it pisses me off. What is it? What is the connect? Yeah, yeah, no, the Spanish people say it like that, like Feliciano hmm. Lopez. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> 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 Feliciano Lopez. <laughs> yeah, what is with- so I don't know, it pisses me Ibiza off. Is Ibiza or Ibiza? Well, I'm Australian, so I'm not going to pretend I'm Spanish. So I'm going to say Ibiza, but people are going to say Ibiza. But I don't see a TH and it makes no sense yeah, to me. Yeah, it's a Z. So that, yeah. I went there in COVID and I can see how that would get pretty, yeah. pretty loose. Uh, my bear would be pretty loose as well. Mm -hmm. Spain. I'm trying to think which other like Some real good holiday. tips here. There's obviously mm. Amalfi Coast and all those places. He's so Positive well traveled, hey. Like he's been to every country in the I've world. Been everywhere, but I he's just about listed that's every why. Yeah, but I haven't done said I need the Rick yeah, and Euro summer tips because I'm going in July. And I, yeah, know, but I haven't knows. done the proper like full blown like holidays mm. there. You just done honest. a quick stint. Yeah, I've just done quick stints or I'm playing or I've had a day off. I do love mm. London though. London's one, one of my favorite cities. It's like a bigger Melbourne. What restaurant in London are we going? Restaurants in London. I went to a place called Jack's, which is cool. It's like, it's a good restaurant, but it turns into like a bar club after in Chelsea. Chelsea, um, Fulham, Chelsea is a real good area. And then if you roll down Knightsbridge, it's one of the coolest things I've seen because there's literally like, a Lambo is like the worst car you've seen. What's the yeah, go with right. London though? Because like I've got a couple of mates who've been there. Like I've only been there once and I was there for 24 hours. So it was a super whirlwind experience. But I've heard that the muggings are really bad. Really? Right? I, haven't, I've had, I haven't been mugged I've, personally. I, I know like three, <laughs> three of my mates have been and been robbed at knife point. And I'm Honestly, like, what? Knowing you, I feel like if you walk down, you'd get mugged. <laughs> really? <laughs> really, mate? <laughs> Jeez. Is the mugging actually- you, you Apparently heard. it's rampant. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I, I can't take this place serious. <laughs> Look at that. It's true. Oh, it's the first I've heard of but it. But if anyone's going to get clocked, it's going to be like, yeah, bro, what have I done? I'm a happy go lucky, likeable guy. <laughs> Screw <laughs> you. Far out. Bloody hell. Uh, Cause I listen on the cock and nuggies. Uh. Happy, happy go lucky. Actually, that's something. There you go. Jack's London. Bang. Ja Jack's London yeah. is a cool spot. Um, we ended up going to Raffles after um, Toy Room is a nightclub. I'm just listing clubs more. Yeah, than it's good. 
It's good insight. Yeah. A lot of people are about to go there. The NRC doesn't go to countries with the culture. <laughs> you see, the nightclub culture is a different thing. <laughs> He's a changed man now. He's a changed man. He's seen strobe lights in every country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen a couple. I've seen a couple. Mexico's about funny. You, so say, the smoke machines know. differ from nightclub to nightclub in country to country? <laughs> well, only does his best work in the darkness. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was actually good. I'll pay that. Um, Mexico's great, mate. Have you been to Mexico City? I haven't done the city. No, I was going to go <laughs> after uh, my... Miami. I was going to go to Mexico City. I actually landed there once, and there was an earthquake. It was crazy. I was at passport. What? Yeah, I swear to God, I was at passport control, and uh, we were going to give the passports. I was with my coach Todd, and uh, I'm like, "Whoa, I feel a bit dizzy, man." You, like, oh yeah, I'm a little bit dizzy. We look up; it's got the passport control sign is like swaying from wow. the top of the roof. I'm like, "Fuck, man, like, what's going on here?" I'm like, "Man, I was like, is this an earthquake?" Yeah, it got announced there was an earthquake. Everyone goes outside because they took everyone outside so nothing would fall on our heads so we're like where all the planes are and everything on the tarmac while an earthquake's going to mexico city i was like yeah i'll probably stay away that, that is crazy. crazy imagine if the planes come like i would love to know what happens like if the plane goes down like how that would feel sitting yeah, in the plane i don't know but if someone was to be on a plane i feel that. like you would be on <laughs> <that>. <laughs> the worst luck. but it's also my biggest fear like i, I find flying quite petrifying do you yeah i don't i don't I think the like americans it. are like that's why they don't come to australia hate, too yeah, far I hate turbulence i mm. hate it so same much. i hate yeah. turby have you had some real bad turbulence? yeah i've before? had some bad ones it's yeah. worse like on those small like Lufthansa yeah, planes mm. in europe and stuff fueling the big planes yeah the big planes you're fine and i don't know i don't worry as much about the real long flights it's more the like domestics and the little ones the, the quick ones I'm i went like, on a Shit. linked flight to canberra with a little prop prop, prop plane yeah she whiz it was dicey i'm not even sure if there was anyone flying it <laughs> i don't know how I don't it's know a small how plane we... you'd feel more of the wind yeah well mate it was full on and like as we were taking off the lights started flickering got it off and i just stared at this chick next to me and she was just like yeah, you know you worry when there's a bit of <laughs> turbulence start- and you see the people next to you like grasping on yeah, the side. Yeah, of the yeah, side, yeah. Like, you grab the side yeah. and you start sweating a bit, yeah. and it's you just get these real bad thoughts, don't you? Yeah, like- man, it's so <laughs> scary. That's one thing that I just can't deal with. I would rather die any other way than in, in the a plane air. crash. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. like a I- crocodile. Yeah. Nah, I, I don't want a death roll, bro. <laughs> I don't want to get death those roll. death rolls are heck. Yeah. If I'm going to go, don't take like my arm. Yeah, Don't take true. both my arms. Just take the rest of me. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I know. That's so true. Some dark topics here. Some dark topics. Again, I feel like- Some dark to topics. Death roll. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> Oh, very good. You can take them off, Cock, because I know you're, um, you like to look humble and we're inside. But yeah, that's great. So London, Jax, and a couple of nightclubs you just named. Jax mm-hmm. went raffles after Jax. Bit overpriced, but something to do. Oh, well, so everyone but Loney goes to this place. What's this? You said it was overpriced. Loney. Oh, mate, just, you know, most of, oh, I'll take it to nice place. Is anywhere she wants to go? Now, we put, up some, girl. we put up some questions. I don't know if you Drop tuned into wally. our podcast, Cocky. Oh, the Wally, yeah. yeah. Um, but we had, we, had, we had 48 hours for people to write in and we only got three questions for Loney. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so this week, Gee, we've had, this week, we've had a lot and it was a bit of a running so, To day. be fair, I know that the Osmeric and Aces love an athlete. They don't. <laughs> typically <laughs> like seeing great comedians. So what I've actually done is I've actually uh, put some questions out to my own uh, conglomerate of followers. <laughs> you have. And, Con- uh, conglomerate. conglomerate of followers. And uh, they were- worth you. Well, <laughs> Gee whiz, this man's underestimating my IQ. Can you give <laughs> us your top two out of your ones? The first one, and Thadassi will like this one because it's a ripper. Jonas Segal has said, where the fuck <laughs> is my wallet? <laughs> Wow. Now, this is a great story. This happened just the other day. Should I go into this? Yeah, get some data. Well, we need some context. Oh, try it. Fantastic. So, Cocky, can you go into this? Yeah, you can. It's funny. Well, we can we can, we can, can both tell a story. But basically, like I say that Thadassi and I sometimes resemble that of Dub and Dumber. We can sometimes do some outrageous things. Brilliant. Anyway, we're, we can be from time to time. We all are. Uh, we all are. Let's be real. And anyway, he came straight back from overseas from his tennis trip. This is just recently. Comes over to my house. Talk about a friend. My first visit straight to Loney. Yeah, yeah, ripping bike. Yeah, you're a good man. You're a good man. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right on him. Anyway, anyway. So he comes over. He's, he's sitting in my room. And anyway, we decide to go to Church Street. Go to Church Street. And I say to him, you know when there's like three stages when you forget your wallet? Like I was laughing along. We're having a great time. I've checked my pocket. I've got, <laughs> where's my wallet? No, seriously, where's my wallet? Where the fuck is my wallet? <laughs> and then he's like, I don't know, bro. I don't know where your wallet is. 
I've got no idea. So I'm <laughs> tapping my pockets. I'm like, oh God, I start like tracing back my thoughts. I'm like, call my mum. I'm like, is it, is it in my room? She goes, no, it's not in my room. I go, fuck. <laughs> so I start really panicking. I start really panicking. I'm like, where the fuck's my wallet? Where the fuck's my wallet? I'm walking around. I'm walking from the car to where we were in Church Street where we had food. Couldn't find my wallet anywhere. Couldn't find my wallet anywhere. I said to Thanasi, please, mate, can you please check your pocket just in case you picked it up by mistake, mate? I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. He goes, why the fuck would I have your wallet, you absolute idiot, bro? There's no way I would have your wallet. You're a moron. Go check your room. You're so stupid. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, mate, we have to go now. We have to go back to my place now. We get in the car, go to my place. He sits out the front. He's on the phone to his coach. I'm inside freaking out. I'm flipping sofas. I'm having domestics and everyone in my house. I'm like, it was you, bitch. It was you. It was, fuck, it was fucking start you, accusing, dad. Start accusing people. Was accusing people left and right. I've turned over sofas left and right. I'm looking under my bed. I'm freaking out. I'm panicking. I'm shaking because I'm like, oh, I have to call the bank and I have to cancel all my cars. I can go to Kuyong. I'm going to lose my Kuyong membership. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> finally, I go out the front. I'm like, I know it was on my bed. I just got to ask him one more time. So I go out the front. Then I just hung up. He's like, what, Loney, you loser? I'm like, <laughs> mate, please, please, mate, can you please check your pocket just because I, I – you might have picked up by mistake. But Arcee, <laughs> let's just pretend this is my wallet for a moment. Yeah. He goes, bro, you're the fucking biggest idiot ever. You're so stupid, Lonnie. You're retarded. You might have your fucking wallet. Oh, my God. This is your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, bro, if this is your wallet, Where's my wife? <laughs> <laughs> so then all of the panic and anxiety that I had was instantly just relinquished and just dumped onto him. And I see him like, oh, bro, we've got to find my wallet, bro. Where is it? Where's my wallet? Anyway, so we both get out of the car. We're looking around like a couple of idiots. And I found it wedged by this underneath his car seat. So I pick up his wallet. We're both dancing around the street like, we found our wallets. We found our wallets. <laughs> A couple, of, Wally before. That <laughs> a couple is of fully grown men just, mate, oh, would have looked so ridiculous. That but is brilliant. Typical. typical. Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. If you were there at the time, it was one of the mate, most ridiculous things. Yeah, it was one of the most ridiculous things ever. So there was that. That's um, a great story. I don't great know. story. Who wrote that one in? Give him a shout out, whoever asked you. John that. Seagal, actually, who's the nasty Coconuts, his fitness trainer, ripping bloke. Uh, yes, and he's he's very, very good. He's he's a very knowledgeable guy. He's Work my with Northern second Northern. father, this mm. man. That's yeah, he's, he's awesome. He's really cool. Um, Jeez, me cheeks are. Bit sore. Oh, we got two around here. He's cramping up here. <laughs> we got some really good ones here. Uh, there's two more. We'll go through if we've got time. Do we have time, or yeah, do we yeah, move yeah. on? Get, get your best two, and I'll get my best two. We're always most... and big shout out to the Aces for getting around the questions. We love it. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, on short turnaround here. Most fun o- fun night out with Nick and Cock. Uh, Both of us. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, this would be good. I reckon. I think after Aussie, but Nick wasn't there because he decided true. to get a heap of important flight at seven a.m. the next day with his girlfriend. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. He's a change man. <laughs> but I'm not bitter about that at all. <laughs> I don't know if you bring this up, but 2017? 17 was some of the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The in, best. in New York, New York City. Oh, yeah. Bro, that was a different- Yeah, let's talk about that it. That was a different level. So- Oh, that was bad. Yeah, I don't know how much I can divulge here. It's fine. It's fine. Under no, buses, no, I'll throw center. myself under. Really? Yeah. But I don't know. There's like a couple of other little details from this story that I'd love to divulge, but I'm just not sure if I'm able to <laughs> proceed with it caution. Involve it involves uh, tennis. Uh, potentially. Luckily, a, this a is pre recorded, so we're going to have a tennis racket at a high level and another person who swings a tennis racket at a high level. And Oh, uh, you don't have to involve names. But okay, we, yeah, can, okay. we can say the story. Okay. So I was out at this club, Thanasi and I. Where, where were we? Do we know the name of the club? No, it was, it was a big one. We were at Catch in mm, New York. New York. And then ended up going out That's Monday after. night vibes, Catch normal. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, there's that. every vibe, oh, but like yeah, think, Mondays is special. Yeah, I, I think I've been there as well. Drunkest I've ever been in my entire life, without a shadow of a doubt. It was bad, yeah. I just, yeah, I remember we had, I had Davis Cup practice um, the next day. <laughs> and <laughs> this is going to be the front page of Daily Mail? La- Leighton, <laughs> Leighton messages. I, I got in a bit of shit for that. And very yeah. deservedly so. Mm. But anyway. Young Darman, you know. Mm. Full of, yeah. Yeah, um, full of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hectic. Um, six years ago. Yeah, 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 exactly. Six years ago. Stupid. Young whippersnappers. I just had like a five set match um, with Tip Sarovich. Actually, now that you mm. think of it, my other only loss from two sets to love up. Mm. Um, awesome. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I had, I just made my first final in Mexico. So I'm like, I'm pretty happy. Like, it's been, it was a tough match. I'm going to let it out. And we had Davis Cup coming up, um, the Team Australia, and me and Nick are there. And Leighton's like, mate, um, 8.30 bus the next morning for practice. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no worries. Me and Nick will be there. Um, sharp. 
Anyway, <laughs> so, we we go to catch, you know, so, a bit of sushi, a couple of drinks, nothing too bad. We end up going to this club. I don't know where it was. A few was, other high profile tennis players yep. also joined us from other countries. Yep. But anyway, yeah. Continue. Male and female. Like yep. it was a mix. Yeah, mix. Know. Um, Nick was there. We were all having a good time. Yeah. And uh, we end up, I just remember like, <laughs> if I start drinking vodka straight and I can't taste it, it's a bad, it's a bad sign. Yeah, yeah. And when it's going down like water, it's, I mean, I'm in some strife. Um, you know, when you get that built up like saliva in your mouth, when there's just not much going on, like every time I have a shot of tequila, I feel like I'm going to vomit. Yeah, it's that type that. of thing. Mm. Anyway, I just, the last thing I remember from that night is I fell through some curtains. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Head That's backwards. Because I went to the bathroom and chaos had just broken loose. Like, I remember seeing this guy wedged between a couch and a window <laughs> on his back like a turtle. <laughs> like, he was so far gone. He was like, Mara, help me out. <laughs> help me out. fingers doing that? <laughs> no, bro, you got the longest levers and fingers. You see me like, nails. Bro, help me out. Help me out. I look over and Nick's on a table, like, fist pumping, like, with his huge mitts, like, punching ceilings. <laughs> And stuff. <laughs> Literally, there's about three females walking around in lingerie with sparklers holding like 500 shots up. <laughs> I'm like, where are these people coming from? And Nick has a habit of doing that. Like, I don't know why he does that when we go out, but yeah. I'll just be like, mate, I'm happy with a vodka soda. He comes back with it like, uh, 12 bottles of like magnums and like 80 girls. We wouldn't have even made a dent in the first one. You'll get three more. I'm like, mate, who's yeah. drinking this? Yeah. Like 80 club girls that come out they when you spend the, the lights yeah, and when the entertainment they, the comes out. The big show sort of stuff. God, like, I hate that. It's so cringe. Oh, oh, it's and tough. like plates of watch. shots and like he'll he'll just drop like insane. I'm like, mate, we don't need this. He's <laughs> like, do a shot. Do a fucking shot. And I was like, no. And the man can drink, let's be honest. Yeah, he, like he can, Nick can hold his alcohol, mate. Like I've seen that guy put down enough alcohol to kill a man <laughs> <laughs> and the bloke is powering through right but i don't have that tolerance so i remember mate, i was the drunkest i've ever been and i can divulge this now because i'm in a loving relationship and i love my girlfriend very much but at the time i was very much single and there was a beautiful sort of Mab mademoiselle with a very high profile who was there that night and I decided to uh, shoot my shot. However, when I shot my shot, I was also the drunkest I've ever been. <laughs> so <laughs> he's really steering this. He's like dodging and steering. I didn't know if he'd go there, but he's gone. <laughs> so I, I, uh, should I tell the story? Yeah, go on. Yeah, you've gone this far. <laughs> yeah, so, you're halfway in, mate. The shovel. So, I got the shovel. I want you to imagine how drunk I'm like. Think of the drunkest you've ever been. This goes out to all our listeners, everyone watching right now. Think of the drunkest you've ever been and think about like how coherent your sentences are and how you look when you're that drunk. All right? I was worse than that. So I'm standing there in this T-Rex position. <laughs> Thanasi's on his back wedged between a window. <laughs> Nick's on a table punching the ceiling. It's chaos all around us, right? <laughs> Sparklers, girls in lingerie. It's insane. So I'm standing there and I, I look over at this girl and she's dancing underneath the strobe light and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a crack here. <laughs> so I walk over, stumbling over, right? I go to tap this particular Mademoiselle on the arm, but unfortunately I'm so drunk that as my arm goes out to tap certain Mademoiselle, it lands on her best friend's shoulder. <laughs> her friend's dancing, turns around and goes, uh, what the fuck? Are you right? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you go and tell your friend. I'm going to go down here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, verbatim, verbatim, her friend turns around and she goes, she goes, fine. <laughs> Tells her friend, friend turns back around and goes, don't say that in public. You're going to get me all hot and flustered. <laughs> I go, oh my God. I didn't realize, I didn't realize I was in with the shot, right? I couldn't believe it. So I'm like, I got in my drunken state. I'm like, I got to get to the bathroom. I have to get to the bathroom now. I spruce myself up, come back out and make my play. She's keen. So I walk over to the bathroom, yak my guts out, <laughs> like absolutely pay to the bathroom. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. All over the place, splash some water on my face, oh, <laughs> clean up for one of the bloody cleanup crew. Anyway, come back out, walk out. She's hooking up with another bloke. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so drunk and I'm sitting there and I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, it was that bad. And then the next day, man, I've never been more sick. I remember I was in some random New York apartment. It was like 500 degrees. <laughs> I was sweating with just the alcohol in my body. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my Mate, it was that bad. 
I did not know where that was going. Yeah, sorry, mate, but that's that that a ripping story. Safe to say we are. Yeah, we were in a cab at five thirty a.m. on our way back to the hotel, and I yeah. didn't make the uh, Davis Cup practice at eight thirty. Oh, yeah, Davis I'd, Cup uh, practice. I had uh, to send that text yeah. to the uh, captain, and yeah, I didn't. I didn't lie. I copped it on the chin, and uh, didn't go so well. What well, time was practice that morning? I had to leave at eight thirty. I got back to my room at five thirty. Oh yeah, three hours sleep and alcohol in the guts. You act in the taxi. Mm. I don't know how he didn't find me or see me. I was I, like, yeah, <laughs> I was just like, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I do remember being in a certain place. I was, place, on the window, I was like half out the window, and half in, yeah, like wow. on the roller window thing. Oh uh, yeah, I do remember being in a certain place, hotel room, and hearing a uh, another certain Davis Cup captain giving him a real sir. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like on the field position. It was warranted. It took a couple of years to uh, make that back up. But, yeah, hey, that is great. Is what it yeah, is. yeah cock- four cockies yeah. just coughing it, and Lonnie's like, oh, yeah. and there's yeah. just no it's great rest- night for <laughs> yeah, yeah. my whole life. That's when my career went south. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I wasn't the instigator for that night. Hey, we all make That's mistakes true. when we're young. They're, they're the things that you do when you grow mm. up. You, you know, great you look story. Back. Great story. Mm. You yeah. Yeah, if I didn't go out and just made Davis Cup practice, like where would that story be? Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. I mean, look, while, you, while you're young, you know, he's, uh, I feel like to be fair though, in your credit, like well, that was you've matured a lot, I reckon, and, and especially in the, the way you go about. I can't take this book seriously. No, I'm being sure. Like <laughs> it brings it. No, 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 no. no. Oh my god, it goes from there to there. No, yeah. But the gag, like obviously, I've taken the piss before, but I'm being 100 percent earnest for a moment. <laughs> I reckon you've definitely matured a lot as a player, and your professionalism and the way you go about your tennis has actually gone. I'm being deadly serious, oh, man. man. I'm being serious, bro. From the heart like shit. Gags coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no yeah. gag. No gag. Oh, this is, this is love earnesty. We love yeah. that. No, this is earnesty. You're a big like, softy, you big cutie. Shit, man. Hectic. Now, it's time, for me to, <laughs> <laughs> it's time for me to ask you a couple more questions yeah. from the Aces community. I and mean, again, shout out to everyone that gets around these because there's some funny ones out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just go through them. Is this Casey Green? What's the Nasty's type? I won't ask you that because you're, you're in love now. Mm. Um, <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, there you true. go. Mickey Bednarak, what's your favorite shot when you are playing tennis? You just said your strength's the forearm. Forehand. Forehand. <laughs> <laughs> so <I'm That's>, <laughs> was that a purposeful typo? No, it wasn't. I'm no, going to be honest. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to read the questions and I'm upset. <laughs> your mind's in the gun. <laughs> I, <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> your, favorite, yeah. your strength's your forearm. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Beautiful. Your forehand. You'd get a bit... Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of stability through the forearm. Your I had a lot of practice over a few strong, years. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is your favorite shot? <laughs> yeah, it's my forehand. Forehand's definitely my favorite. Um, it's just something I feel super comfortable with. I can hit, I feel like I can hit a winner almost anywhere on the court with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, it's my one shot that I always trust under pressure and go after, make or miss. Love it. Both of you from. Ray Ryan and I can't even pronounce the name, but, to, <laughs> to, but thank you for the question. What's your Guzman Gomez order? Interesting. I, yeah. I don't really have Guzman that much. But, but and you don't mind it. We've been his salad because he's worried about his rig all the time. Well, but the bowl? I'll go. Yeah, I'll go hit a Cali burrito. Nice. I think it's a Cali. I, I don't know. Got a good tang to it. I'm not sold on the chips in it, but I'll cop it. You, Lones? Yeah, it's a nice ride. I go to the bowl. Usually just looking after the figure. <laughs> Make sure the rig's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's out. <laughs> you know, you get, my, uh, get them always out. Yeah. <laughs> to the cock. <laughs> yep. What kept you motivated? <laughs> I'm trying to get these questions. Yeah. To the cock. What kept you motivated through your injuries? Um, it was tough. A lot of times, I definitely thought about stopping. Um, but I tried to look back and and having a good support staff was was the key thing. But I tried to look back at matches I had where I beat really good players or I had really good matches and the crowd got behind me and the support um, and and remembered why I started. So. Tried to tried to hold on to those things. Love it. Sammy Summers, shout out. He's consistently in here. For both of you, uh, who is better on the sauce? Which means the beers. Who lights it up more? I reckon we're pretty similar on the sauce. Yeah, Loney doesn't drink much purely oh. for the fact that he has to pay for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. Um, Come and see me this tonight. is the biggest yeah. pot call in the kettle black I've ever seen That's in my career. from you. Unbelievable um, scene. Why do you know? Anyway. Who poured your coffee before? <laughs> <laughs> so both, Who is the both even. No, we're both actually pretty good. There's nothing more I hate than people when they get hammered, they get like real aggressive and yeah. real punchy. Yeah. And we both kind of, I don't know, I feel like, I could be wrong, but I feel like alcohol and when you're out and drinking a fair bit, I feel like it kind of accentuates like what you're actually like. 
or it brings out your true personality. Mm, that's interesting. Chase. So I don't know. Me and Loney, I, I feel like, like yeah, mm. I feel like we get very happy and giggly and, and start taking the piss yeah, even more than what just, we already do. We're just yeah, good vibes. Back, it's just great vibes. Yeah. yeah, we just we literally just get. You're that's good. Right. You're in some action. You're, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You're good, I do, I'm, good on the sauce. I was, I'm I was with saying. you. I, I find it strange when people have a you know a few too many drinks yeah, and they get aggro. In my eye. I'm freaking out. This yeah. could be a repeat of what happened with the Andy Murray match. <laughs> Starting to get really itchy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just give us a look. I didn't drop one. <laughs> it's red in the devil's dick already, mate. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable seeds. Right up. One more from Timmy Knight. Um, when are you going back on tour and what tournaments are you playing this year? Um, my first tournament is going to be the Madrid Masters and then just is on to Rome Masters and keep going on through uh, through French Open and then on the grass in England uh, through to Wimbledon. Um, but I'm going to be overseas, I think, till probably US Open, till September. And then we have Davis Cup, so playing for Australia uh, in Manchester later in the year. So that should be cool. Um, so yeah, my, my goal this year is to just try and play as much as I can. Um, that's the thing that's held me back a little bit in the past. I find it tough coming from Australia and traveling a lot. So I'm going to try and really make a push to uh, see how many tournaments I can play this year. Yeah, I mean, it's mm. a big tour ahead for you. Yeah, I'm going to try to. That's brilliant. Well, thanks to everyone that wrote in the questions. Um, as I said, we only got time for a four or five. Loney had a couple more. Now, um, Cock, you don't, well, obviously loans was on the other week, but our friends at Milwaukee have got you some tools as well. So thank you for coming on. Uh, this one here is the pruning saw. That's beautiful. The yeah, 18 awesome. fuel hatchet pruning saw. No doubt you'd be handy on the tools. You got this, yeah. you got the um, supercharger starter pack as well. So take that one home. Yeah, that, it's pretty sick. Like, that's a, um, yeah, I don't know. I know. Cool, so is there any, like, you know, do you have to do I'm any gardening? Man, but well, the difference between these Milwaukee tools go, and this go. tool is these ones are useful. <laughs> How long? How long when you were looking at those tools did you plan yeah. that game? For 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been circling around the globe. I've um, been raiding. I'm Very sure. good. Uh, mm. Cut more of Lenny's grass with these. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> Speaking of tools, oh, wow. what's been the handiest thing that you've done this yeah. year on the court? Is there a moment where, you know, we've got the... Braden is the best in the business. He'll be able to clip this up. Has there been a rally or a point? What's the handiest thing you've done this year on the court? Uh, this mm. one is not going to go in my favor, but I've seen the clip about 400 million times and it's me not being able to put a smash away against Andy Murray. Oh, so Clip, man. I've seen that on that, um, Insta. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. That, one, <laughs> that one plays on my mind every time. That's uh, it's probably a game changer if I make that one. Yeah, but that yeah. that point where I've got about five smashes and he's, I swear it's hindrance because he's going out there. He's like, ah, yeah. ah, <laughs> as he's getting to the ball every time. Bit of a delayed grunt too. Yeah, I, was, I don't know at which point there's a hindrance there, but yeah, uh, yeah that's probably one of the one of the points that gets replayed over and over again so yeah. not for not for good there you go the Milwaukee tool yeah. handiest moment of maybe Eddie Murray's career <laughs> 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 enjoy that one a little bit too much yeah, it's, uh, it's gone against me this fucking tool <laughs> because uh, uh, Tommy Sheridan's house has got like the Scottish flag I mean he's was a secret <laughs> Eddie Murray fan <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, lads, yeah. with, uh, I can't thank you enough. It's always good. We do this every year, you yeah. two. Very funny. And always great to check in with you before you go on tour. NBA finals. We'll be all keeping in contact. Um, I might even be over there in New York. Uh, my 30th might be in New York. You're 30. The yeah, end of the, get, yeah, get, end of this year. hand off my uh, yeah. hair product, mate. <laughs> so, yeah, right, um, so Tommy might need it more than you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on, both of you. Uh, great laugh. All the best for the year. Some gigs coming up, no doubt. <laughs> um, he's got the comb there for the... For the receiver <laughs> from Beard and Blade. Well, this, is, this is going to get a bigger comb than all my bloody hair. I can tell you that much. <laughs> is, there any, is there any way you want to sign out? You already sign out beautifully. We've got Beard and Blade here in Milwaukee. Oh, look, See you next I week. I mean, always, mate. I mean, like, should we whip out the impersonation list and just get, have a little bit of a play? What do you reckon? <laughs> I love how he gets the Brad, list Brad, out. Yeah, how he's do you remember what you're going like, Are you getting a list out or you already got him in your- He's your... sweating. I've got stand-up <laughs> ideas here with notes. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. He's a crookest man. <laughs> it's yeah. so weird. I love going on adventures in my own backyard. And that's exactly what these Milwaukee tools are going to enable Bear to do. And I can't wait to get out of there and shave my ball sack with his hero <laughs> hair. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely great. And it's imperative that you get your own hero shaver and your Milwaukee tools because otherwise you're going to be one barren bastard. That's bear. <laughs> oh, that's true. That one. I don't need any more. Oh, oh, really? All right. <clears throat> and now sign off. Say, everyone, make sure you subscribe, follow us on social media, and we'll see you next week in your next best accent. Oh.
Dave Hughes being getting a bit of love on TikTok recently. Should yeah. I do some Hughesy? Yeah. Right. This is your, this is your time, Lenny. All right. Shine. Sign us off in juicy. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Hughes here. Yeah. It's outrageous. We're joined by Tommy Sheridan, Tanasi Kokonakis, and Braden on the panels. Yeah. <laughs> Oz American Ace is one of the best shows in Australia. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Make sure you tune in. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. <laughs> it's all over the place. Yeah. So make sure you get and listen to the podcast, man. Otherwise, you're a fucking loser. Yeah. Dave Hughes <laughs> signing out. Yeah. Haven't blinked yet. Might need to get some bloody Rick's Eyewear to save. <laughs> Me retina, yeah. <laughs> Fucking out, right? Shit, stay alive. I'll dive here now. Thanks for listening to another episode of Tommy Talks, where you literally can't thank you enough for all your support. Speaking of support, our great mates, Milwaukee Tools. Without yours, we wouldn't be here. Milwaukee Outdoor Power Equipment gives you the power to clear, cut, and maintain the outdoors without the petrol headaches. No pull starts, no engine maintenance, no mixing petrol and oil. Book a test drive now at milwaukeetools.com.au. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. And remember, Beard and Blade is your one-stop shop for all your manly grooming needs. Beard and Blade offers an extensive range of men's premium grooming products that are designed to provide a closer, smoother, and more comfortable shave. With over 90 brands available and products ranging from razors, beard oils, shaving creams to skincare and hairstyling, it's time to upgrade your shave. Visit beardandblade.com.au, Australia's number one online men's grooming company. Make the switch today to Beard and Blade. Righto, we'll see you on the next podcast.